and become bowl eligible for the second straight season. It's been an up and down year for the Pitt Panthers, who come in with plans of ending this Saturday on the high end of that roller coaster ride. It's Pitts in Louisville in the Big East Network Game of the Week, and it's coming up next. Welcome to the Big East Network Game of the Week presented by PNC. This afternoon we're back in Louisville, Kentucky inside Papa John's Cardinal Stadium where they're expecting a sold out crowd this afternoon as the Cardinals play host to the Pitt Panthers. The Panthers come in with 29 sacks. They're tied for the lead in the Big East. Aaron Donald, he's only a sophomore. He has seven. There's Anthony Connor at senior day. 16 seniors, their final game here inside Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Anthony Carter, one of the 16, he broke his neck against Rutgers, and he has definitely served as an inspiration the last two weeks as they ride this three-game winning streak. Nice moment between Charlie Strong and Anthony Connor, the senior defensive back. Hi, everybody, along with uh, John Congemi, the former Pitt quarterback. I'm Mike Gleason. It's always great to uh, have you with us. You know, you think of this Louisville football team. Back on October 15th, we had them at Cincinnati. They looked like a young, talented team. Now they look like an older, more experienced team that's hungry for a victory. They're finding ways to get victories, Mike. And I think back there at Paul Brown Stadium, they didn't know how to win football games. Now you fast forward a month and three wins together. They string them together. And it's a team that's very confident in what they can do. And they're confident in the second half. That's the team the Pitt Panthers are going to try to defeat here at Papa John Stadium. And we'll have more on the Cardinals and the Pitt Panthers uh, in a couple of minutes. Right now, let's get you up to speed with the rest of the Big East Conference. We'll check the Big East standings uh, brought to you by the Belk Bowl and the Cincinnati Bearcats sitting on top, the only undefeated team at this juncture. Total control of the Big East Conference right now are the Bearcats, 3-0 in conference, 7-1 overall. Louisville, Rutgers, and West Virginia all nipping at their heels, but Cincinnati will have to stumble to allow any one of those teams to try to take the top spot. The action in the conference got rolling in the Dome last night as USF snapped the four-game skip. And it was all quarterback B.J. Daniels. Over 250 yards passing. He added 117 and a touchdown on the ground for their first Big East victory. How about West Virginia going to Cincinnati? The Mountaineers, they've had... They haven't had more than two losses in league play since 2001. The big question is, Mike, can the Mountaineers bounce back at Cincinnati where Isaiah Pede and Zach Kolaris has that team rolling on offense? And the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers head for Yankee Stadium to take on the Black Knights of Army today. Chase Dobb gets his job back, the sophomore quarterback. He rallied this team in overtime to a three-point victory, and he'll have his favorite target, Mohamed Sanu, that big number six to throw at over the middle of the football field. Big number six has 81 catches, 12 more, and he'll break a Larry Fitzgerald single season and record in the Big East. For more on the Big East Conference, let's check in with our Big East insider. Here's Eamon McEnany. Thanks, Mike. I spoke to Cincinnati coach Butch Jones this week, and he's happy that his team is finding ways to win games, but he also admitted that this West Virginia offense will be the biggest challenge his defense has faced all year, and his number one concern, number one, Tavon Austin. His ability to make small plays, big plays, and West Virginia's ability to get the ball into his hands are Coach Jones' biggest concern. He told me that, you know, sometimes you pay so much attention to Austin, though, that the other guys can burn you. He thought this was a game he would love to have Dominic battle with his experience and leadership back in the secondary. As John mentioned, Rutgers goes to Yankee Stadium to take on Army. Greg Schiano told me this week it's going to be pretty cool to play at Yankee Stadium, but he also said that Chase Dodd is his starter, and I asked him how does he make sure that Dodd doesn't play with one eye over his shoulder looking back at Gary Nova, and he said, look, those two guys know that they evaluate that position like they evaluate any other position. So if he's moving the team, getting the team into scoring situations and scoring, it's Chase Dodd's job. If he does it, he won't hesitate. Gary Nova will get back out on the field, Mike. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. And a victory for the Scarlet Knights. And uh, Greg Shano's back in the bowl business. Let's get back to our game right now. The Pitt Panthers, uh, they come in at 4-5, and five, John. And you look at this team under Todd Graham in his first year. They have rash of injuries, a new system, 
They've been up, they've been down, but I guess the bottom line is uh, if there was an operative word to describe this team, it would be inconsistent. They haven't found a way to do it on a consistent basis, Mike, and that's the story not only with the quarterback position, but that entire offense, but it all starts with the quarterback, and in their four wins, you can see the numbers rise above 270 yards. In their five losses, it dips well below where they would want it to have, so consistency in the offense starts at the quarterback and number 12, Tino Sinceri. He has to play at an efficient level today, stay away from the catastrophic plays but just deal the football and he can't do it by himself Mike I think the key to this game will be the running attack and those receivers helping out Tino Sinceri you see eight touchdowns eight interceptions he's doing an efficient job in that department but he has to make the bigger plays the plays that win or lose a football game you're hoping for the Panthers he makes more positive plays John a year ago Charlie Strong had the freshman of the year in Hakeem Smith on the defensive side of the ball his quarterback Teddy Bridgewater if he continues to play like he has been playing more than likely, he'll be the freshman of the year this season. Terrific young player at the quarterback position, and you talk about making great decisions. Teddy Bridgewater does it at the line of scrimmage for the Cardinals. You can see him getting out of a pass play, optioning off to a run play. He's checking this at the line of scrimmage, and he's only a freshman. They're putting more on his plate, and this led to a 61-yard touchdown by Victor Anderson. Last week against the Mountaineers, he had eyes in the back of his head. He scrambled. He threw for 12 yards to Devontae Parker to keep a drive alive late in this football game. Mike, I've said it once. I'll say it numerous of times. He is not a freshman anymore. One touchdown, one interception. He had a season high, 246 last week on the road against the Mountaineers. He's the guy with a lot of confidence, and everybody's looking to him to make plays in this offense. During the three-game winning streak, Bridgewater hitting just under 70% of his passes. Pittsburgh and Louisville are back with the kickoff right after this. I'm a streaker. I'm 300 pounds, painted blue, and apart from the cleats, I'm completely naked. <laughs> Go stay! Oops. And if you've got 15 minute insurance, they might not pay for this. So get all state. Mm. You can save cash and be better protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an all state agent. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, the greatest honor the band can grant a non-band member. Among the privileged few who have been chosen have been professional athletes, a United States Senator, even Bob Hope. Fortunately, knowing how to play the sousaphone is not a requirement for dotting the I in Script, Ohio. Fans show their loyalty in all kinds of ways. Ours, just by another Hyundai. Welcome back inside Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, the final home game in 2011 for the Louisville Cardinals. Mike Gleason along with John Congemi, Amy McEnany, and John, the Pitt Panthers, they won the toss, but they're not going to defer. They want the football. I think that's a good decision. You want to see what you're going to have to face in this Louisville Cardinals defense. They like to bring pressure, so you might as well see what the game plan is right from the start of this football game. Ronald Jones back to receive the kick. The true freshman lets it hit in the end zone and the Pitt Panthers will start from the 20 yard line. So the Panthers come in averaging about 26 points a game. Rushing the football 16 touchdowns they're third in the conference and passing the football there he is number 12 Tino Sinceri redshirt junior he's had some great games and not so great games he had consistency as we talked about in the open he threw for 419 yards a career high against UConn but he's averaging only a 204 yards per game so somewhere in the middle you would put a smile on head coach Todd Graham's face Zach Brown in the backfield behind Sinceri Zach Brown of course the fifth year senior from Royal Palm Florida the transfer from the Wisconsin Badgers Filling in for Ray Graham, who was uh, nicked up and lost his season against UConn. Sinceri comes out firing, and he's 
First pass connects with Devin Street. That's his 34th catch. Picks up seven on the play. This Pitt Panther offense will will operate at a high efficiency in terms of time between they snap the football. You like to snap it 15 to 18 seconds between plays. See the discrepancy there in the first quarter. Actually, both teams here playing very well in the first quarter as of late. Again, they keep it on the ground. They're going to pick up a first down. That's Zach Brown getting the carry. Picks up six. So in two plays, John, they pick up 13. And remember, this is a team without Ray Graham. He was second in the country in rushing before he was injured at home. And now Zach Brown's going to have to pick up that running load and catching it out of the backfield. Four receivers in for Sinceri. Zach Brown in the backfield. Sinceri turns, fires. Shanahan has the catch up over the 45 yard line and he stopped at the 47 picks up 15. Let's take a look now at today's Home Depot starting lineups for the pit offense mentioned Zach Brown to filling in in the backfield. Rick Graham was averaging 5.8 yards of carry Zach Brown 3.5 and up front nine games six different lineups right now Gaskins Hollins Turnley Sheepler and Gibbs gives it a fifth year senior again it's complete. A gain of two that time is Isaac Bennett, the freshman. Defensively, boy, this team has been so nicked up. DeAndres Mount is a true freshman. He's a linebacker. He moves down to play the defensive front. They're going with a five defensive backs, so Preston Brown and Dexter Heyman, each with 61 tackles. They're tied for the lead on this Louisville team. Zach Brown and Isaac Bennett, so we have a fifth-year senior and a freshman in the backfield. Zach Brown gets the call. Five more for the Pitt Panthers as we round out that defensive lineup now in the secondary. We mentioned they're going with the nickel situation. So number 33, Mike Evans, gets the start. Look at Andrew Johnson and Terrell Floyd, both true freshmen. Floyd pulling in for Adrian Bouchel, who had that big kick last week, blocked. And he's not in the lineup today, but he's not hurt. And he was the Big East Special Teams Player of the Week, but not in the starting lineup for the Cardinals who faced their first third down challenge of the afternoon. The Panthers come in seventh in the conference on third down just shy of 35 percent. Sincero inside the 40 yard line moves the change another first down dropped by Dexter Heyman. Seven more for Tino Sinceri. And Mike, this offense can only be successful if Tino Sinceri runs the football on the edge. You have to mix in some quarterback run at some point for the Panthers. And right now, they're operating at a high efficiency, high tempo, and being very accurate with the football. But running is key out of the quarterback position for head coach Todd Graham. Another completed ball by Sinceri. Anthony Gonzalez the redshirt freshman with the grab Andrew Johnson the tackle but Pan Pittsburgh picks up eight more. There's Todd Graham in his first year. You look at those uh, Tulsa teams said uh, John. 07 led. 170 yards. Ronald Jones in. In the Wildcat right now. Zach Brown. Weaves his way inside the 15 yard line. 16 more yards for the Pitt Panthers and John we. They've had two 500 yard games this year. That's the most at Pitt since 2000. Just a great wall and a great hole to run through for the senior Zach Brown. Just a huge hole off the right side. Little misdirection by the Panthers and right now you can see possibly the injuries of the Cardinals defense showing up on that defensive front because the Panthers right now having their way at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. Isaac Bennett in the backfield. Sincere. Nailed inside the 15. Hakeem Smith coming up to make the tackle. He had 10 last week against West Virginia. Boy, that's a, a player out of the secondary you like to see. He reads it right off the back. Quarterback run. Hakeem Smith's going to come off the edge, and there's no hesitation. He sees, sees Sinceri with the football and a terrific form tackle. Gets that shoulder right on the helmet. Good job by the sophomore out of Jonesboro, Georgia. Second down, Pittsburgh. 
They move it inside the 10 yard line again it's Isaac Bennett. We talked with Calvin McGee we thought uh, he said Bennett was going to get a lot more carries. Let's take a look now at how Pittsburgh is doing in the red zone brought to you by Verizon Wireless. The Panthers are first in the conference in the red zone completing 93.5 percent of the time in scores 23 touchdowns out of 29 of 31. They haven't turned the football over in the red zone they have to keep that clean today. And some series down by the goal line. Great decision by the junior quarterback, Tino Sincere. He wanted to get out of there a little bit quicker at the start. He's, he's patient in the pocket, but watch him go to attempt to get out. He runs into the back of one of his linemen, and then he finds some daylight, and he gets that first down. So now the Panthers have it first and goal inside the one. Bennett in the backfield, the true freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bennett gets the call. Bennett gets the touchdown. And the Pitt Panthers take their opening possession in for a score, and they lead it six to nothing. Talked about being efficient, being confident on offense for Tino Sinceri. He came out in that first drive and was very efficient. He was on the mark, on time in the running game. We talked about they needed some help in the running game. And Zach Brown provided that as well as the freshman Isaiah Isaac Bennett who gets in from inside the one yard line. Sinceri four for four for 32 yards on the drive. 80 yards and 12 plays so Sinceri. Nice job of engineering that drive and Bennett gets his first uh, collegiate touchdown the true freshman from Oklahoma. Kevin Harper on for the conversion. And he drills it through and the Pitt Panthers come in averaging 26 and they open up with a 7 nothing lead. Todd Graham feels it on that Pitt sideline 12 plays 80 yards it took close to six minutes off the clock. The freshman Bennett gets in from inside the one and opens up the scoring in this one. Experience of a goal line dive. Really? There's an easier way to get an ultimate NFL fan experience. Just snap the tag wherever Bud Light is sold and you could win. Bud Light in the NFL. Here we go. Can I make it? On the internet, yes. Into the end zone? No. Remember when Christmas was magical? When the mailman delivered to the North Pole? and we all had a front row, shoulder top seat at the parade. Let's get back there. Santa's Wonderland at Bass Pro Shops has what we've all been missing. With the arcades, slot car track, crafts, even a picture with Santa, and it's all free. That's right, free. Time passes, hold on to Christmas. choose to do the right thing there's an insurance company that does that too liberty mutual insurance responsibility what's your policy they're here the hottest new machines of 2012 just in time for the polaris holiday sales event get financing as low as 2.99 percent on all polaris atvs and side-by-sides plus rebates up to one thousand dollars incredible deals on legendary sportsmen powerful rangers and razor sharp razors hurry to your participating polaris dealer before december 31st for financing as low as 2.99 percent and rebates up to one thousand dollars get the details at polaris.com 
Today's Big East Network game is brought to you by PNC for the achiever in you. Champion, it's how you play. Dr. Pepper 10, 10 bold calories, 23 flavors. Bonnage, sounds good. And by the 2012 ESPN National Golf Challenge, go to ESPNGolf.com to sign up today. Anthony Carter, one of 16 seniors, a final game here at home in 2011. And right now the Cardinals are trailing 7 to nothing after a nice drive by the Pitt Panthers. Pitt Panthers were very efficient in that opening drive. Tino Sinceri, we talked about the consistency out of the quarterback position and how the running game, the offensive line, and the wide receivers need to contribute. They were all on the same page, and they operated high efficiency, high tempo. They did a great job opening up on the road against a team that has a hot hand, stringing three victories in a row. You know, John, you talk about inconsistency at the top of the show. This football team, Pittsburgh, 529 yards against UConn, 523 against USF, 120 against Utah. And uh, right, right then and there, you just saw that drive. So they look pretty proficient. There. Anytime you, you come in with new coaches, new offensive systems, new defensive systems, it's very tough, even though we're late in the year, to find that even keel where they feel comfortable about running this offense or defense. Harper's kick. Sonoris Perry at the 11 yard line. Perry. All the way into Pittsburgh territory down to the 45. A 47 yard return but there's a flag down back at the 24. Buddy Jackson makes the tackle. Sonoris Perry had that big touchdown last week in the red zone against the Mountaineers. Illegal block all the way. 44 in the return team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. That's Dennis Hennigan, our referee from our Big East officiating crew. And B.J. Butler is number 44. Guilty of that infraction. So a 47 yard return. They turn around and come back the other way. And Teddy Bridgewater now getting ready to take over. This is his seventh start, John. He's made great decisions in the last three or four football games. You can see his number of yards. The interceptions are down. The percentage is up. He does a great job, but he's still developing. You have to be patient, but he does a good job in managing the game week in and week out over the last three or four football games. Under center with Victor Anderson, the senior. Lining up behind him, this is Victor Anderson looking for that hole. Cuts back nicely, I should add, up over the 15 to the 16 or 17 yard line. Carl Fleming makes a stop. He picks up five. Let's take a look at today's Home Depot starting lineups offensively for the Louisville Cardinals. Dominique Brown mentioned had the big touchdown and the onside kick recovery last week. And up front, uh, they're about as dinged up as the Pittsburgh. Offensive front is, but right now going with Cupper, Miller, Benavides, Smith, and Kessling. Seems like there's more consistency over the last three or That's four right. games up there. Bridgewater, Chichester, his first catch. And Josh Chichester, another senior, with his 21st straight game with a catch. Now, as we take a look at the Pitt Panthers defense, mentioned Aaron Donald, his first start last week, and he has seven sacks, five in the last three games. And the linebackers, Max Gruder, leads the parade with 82 tackles. He had over 100 last year in the secondary. Jared Hawley, they call him Mr. Clutch. He's a co-captain, three-year starter, only a redshirt junior from Eastern Pennsylvania. Anderson again. He spins all the way to the 35-yard line. Kaywon Williams makes the stop. Picks up seven more. Victor Anderson, he'll be our uh, guest on Kajemi's Corner coming up at halftime. And I'm looking forward to listening to that, John, because here he was the freshman of the year. And people don't understand when you're dinged up for three years how frustrating that can be. Injuries. He's fought injuries his entire career, but he's bounced back and have a tremendous senior season to be part of this running back core. Dominic Brown replaces him in the uh, Louisville backfield now. Bridgewater wants to go to work and he finds his man that's Chris White the sophomore made a couple of catches last week 
White, the 20th Cardinal, to make his first start, did that against Syracuse. Nice job of Bridgewater play faking and good scheme by Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, gets it to one of his tight ends. You're going to see multiple tight end sets today. You'll see multiple receiver sets because Bridgewater is allowing that to happen. His concept of what they're trying to do in the offense shows in the completion percentage and the touchdown to interception ratio. Well, you saw those numbers up near 75 percent over the last two games. Bridgewater 12 of 13 in the first half last week in Morgantown. Big Dominique Brown powers his way into a pit territory. Max Gruder makes the stop, but Brown picks up seven more for the Cardinals. How about the keys to the game, John? Well, both of these teams coming out and they're starting what, what they want to do offensively. For Pittsburgh, it's fine consistency. They've done that on their first drive. They have to keep Bridgewater off balance. They haven't been able to do that. But for the Cardinals, learn how to handle winning. They're bouncing back after seven. Seven points were put on the board on offense, and now on the field, they have to stop the run defensively and make Pitt one-dimensional. Double tights with Chichester and Chris White. That's White in motion, number 81. Bridgewater. There he goes, extending that play, with this time with the legs. But did you see Dominic Brown pick up the blitz? Carl Fleming was coming, and Dominic Brown, a former quarterback, did a great job picking up that blitz, John. That's the key to this play. Dominic Brown's going to be in the middle of your screen right there. He upends the linebacker coming in for the Panthers, Greg Williams. And then Bridgewater, we talked about extending plays. He's not going to burn you with his legs, but he's going to move the change. He's going to make positive yards. But more importantly, when he gets outside the pocket, he's going to make good decisions and try to go downfield with the football. Picked up 12 on that play. Another first down for the Cards. Anderson. Wrapped up by number 38, Greg Williams, the fifth-year senior from Naples, Florida, picks up three. I thought it was hilarious, John, yesterday, uh, Charlie telling us uh, against West Virginia, he had a feeling, and he got on the phone talking to Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator. He says, you know, Vance, they're not going to be able to stop our offense, and Vance said, good, because we're not going to be able to stop theirs either. <laughs> that was true. That held true, and they were chuckling about that on the sidelines, and that held true the entire game because Charlie Strong rolled the dice. He faked a punt. He had an attempt at a fake punt, and they went for it on fourth and one late in that football game to really seal the deal. This one's picked. Carl Fleming. We just saw Dominic Brown pick up Fleming on the blitz. But Fleming, the redshirt sophomore for Maryland, gets his first INT. And that's one that's uncharacteristic, Mike, going down closer to the red zone. Teddy Bridgewater never saw the pit defender. And he comes right, undercuts the route. The Panthers find a way to get off the field. And they'll bring their offense back to try to add to that lead. Hey, ladies. Ah. Enjoying the film? Of course not. Because this is our movie! And Dr. Pepper 10 is our soda. It's only 10 manly calories, but with all 23 flavors of Dr. Pepper. It's what guys want, like this. Catchphrase. So you can keep the romantic comedies and lady drinks. We're good. Dr. Pepper 10, it's not for women. I'm, I'm in a timeout because apparently riding the dog like it's a small horse is frowned upon in this establishment. Luckily, though, I, you know, I can conceal this bad boy underneath my blanket just so I can get on E-Trade, check my investment portfolio, research stocks. Wait, what, why are you taking... Oh, I see. Solitary. Just a man and his thoughts and a smartphone with an E-Trade app. Nobody knows... E-Trade, investing unleashed. Big East football on SNY is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. We got a big home game this week. Everybody's coming over. To be successful, we need a little coaching. That's where I come in. Game plan, Coors Light. You're going super cold activated cans. You two are going deep for bottles. Move it, turkeys. Super cold cans need both hands. Come on, man. Hold up. Nose the blue. Go for two. When it comes to big refreshment, we could all use a little coaching. Bring it on, fellas. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Coming through. How you doing? 
It's the Jets on SNY. Get post-game reactions after every game on Jets Post Game Live. The latest game green news direct from Rex Ryan on Jets Open Mic. An in-depth recap of the last game on Jets Extra Point. And a preview of the game ahead on Jets Game Plan. All on SNY, the TV home of the Jets. Johnny Unitas, uh, one of the great quarterbacks to play at this school before moving on to the National Football League. And in a very impressive drive for Louisville, ends in a Teddy Bridgewater INT, his eighth this year. Well, Glee, the defense was just set up perfectly for this Teddy Bridgewater interception. You can see Carl Fleming, he's going to be in the slot right here. He's going to take Chichester on the flat route. That's his job. So Teddy Bridgewater kind of eliminates Fleming, but watch Fleming's eyes right here. He's looking through Chichester to the pocket, and he sees the anticipation of Bridgewater trying to throw one in the hole and he just undercuts the curl route. That's a good job of Carl Fleming looking through the receiver and really baiting the young quarterback to throw that curl route because Carl Fleming knew he was in position to make a play on the football. Cardinals went 56 yards in eight plays. First time in three games they did not score on their opening possession. So Sinceri goes back to work out of the shotgun. Rolls throws it away wisely. Charlie Strong saying yesterday they have to keep that young man in the pocket. Charlie Strong wants to put pressure in the pocket and make Tino Sinceri beat him from within the pocket. I think that if they can stop the run, number one, that's paramount for the Cardinals today. They have to stop the run and make Pitt one-dimensional. They feel like that's to their advantage through four quarters of a football game. So Sinceri burns that one, throws it away. He's four for five to open up this game. Here's Jones. Nice haul. And Jones cuts back up over the 30 yard line. Todd Graham says this true freshman could be a star in the banking. He's a, a former quarterback, good speed. He runs the Wildcat here, a little bit of an end around, but good vision. That's the one thing you see out of the freshman from Fort Meade, Florida. He was able to cut that football back and move the chains for the Panthers. That's his seventh carry this year. He's averaging over eight yards a pop. He's also thrown two passes, both going for touchdowns. I like his percentage, Mike. <laughs> Picked up 14 on that last play. This is Jones in motion. They keep it on the ground. Another big hole. And you wonder about the all the injuries up front for Louisville, how that's affecting them, because this early on doesn't look like the same Louisville defense. We talked to Vance Bedford, their defensive coordinator, yesterday, and he talked about stopping the run get Pitt in second and third and long and if they can't do it with healthy bodies they're moving linebackers up to play on that defensive front they're trying to get as many 11 healthy bodies out on the football field and right now they're having trouble winning the battle at the line of scrimmage well, Zach Brown picked up 10 right after Jones picked up 14 so it's another first down for the Pitt Panthers Zach Brown the fifth year senior in the backfield with uh, sincerity. Sinceri, he tucks it and runs, and he takes a good hit, rolls up near the midfield stripe. Picks up eight yards on the play, hit by Preston Brown, the sophomore linebacker out of Cincinnati. 7-0 Louisville on senior day, trailing a Pittsburgh. We're in the first quarter, along with John Jimmy, former Pitt quarterback, uh, Eamon McEnany. He's down on the sidelines. I'm Mike Gleason. Great to have you with us. A beautiful, sunny Saturday. As the Cardinals... Coming at five and four, riding a three-game winning streak, but Pittsburgh looking very impressive on their second drive. Zach Brown pushed out of bounds at about the 45 by Hakeem Smith. Eight more, John. You can see the yards coming in chunks for the Panthers today, and I think it's due to the health of the Cardinals. Now, don't take anything away from the Panthers. They're executing on offense. Tino's efficient at a high level right now. They're being able to run the football, but I don't think this Cardinal defense is running as well as they can in their front seven. Again, it's Zach Brown. This time he's dropped at the 45. The senior linebacker, Dexter Heyman, making the stop. A loss of one. You know, John talking with Todd Graham on the phone. He's four and five. He'd think he'd be frustrated, but he feels like they're very, very, very close to turning the corner. Plus, he said most of the guys he had at Tulsa, they've been playing this offense since the seventh grade. Yeah, since high school, all the way through high school. And this is a different team. This was built for a different system, and it's taken a while. That's why they've been so inconsistent. But to his pleasure, I'm sure today, they're finding it a little bit more consistent on first down, except for that last that last down. Sincere throws this one. Good 
rush that time. Greg Scruggs putting on some pressure along with uh, Dexter Heyman. So Todd Graham in his first year as the pit coach. Well, look at that. 07 08 Graham's offense at Tulsa led the nation. 544, 570. That's pretty impressive. It is, and it's one of those expectations that Panther fans were hoping for that would catch early, but they've had it in spurts right now, third and long. This is advantage for the Cardinals. Sinceri right down the middle, has his man, and he dropped the football. Anthony Gonzalez, Calvin Pryor, the true freshman safety, came up and made the hit. Big time hit from the secondary, and the Cardinals needed to get their defense off the field. Third and long, it's a situation where it's a catchable football, but you expose a lot of your lower body in that situation. Good bracket coverage. Bellamy comes in from the corner, but the big hit was delivered from the middle of the football field by Calvin Fryer, or Pryor, that freshman from Florida. A lot of Florida players on both of these teams, but the Cardinals are loaded with them. Matt Yachlick on the punts. He has nine inside the 20 in his last three games. 12 on the year so far for Yachtlick. A lot of pressure. And I think Yachtlick will boom this one into the end zone. He was happy just to get it off. A 45-yard punt, net of just 25, but again, the pressure was on. A lot of wind down there for the Pitt special teams, but Calvin Pryor, he's trying to set the tone for this Louisville defense. Don't come down the middle anymore. to make this season better than the last. How about making it brighter, more colorful, and putting all our helpers to work so we can build on our favorite traditions by adding a few new ones. We've all got garlands and budgets to stretch, and this year we can keep them both evergreen. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Here's a bright idea. Trade in any light string and get up to five bucks off the latest Christmas LEDs. Rover Evoke. We're not employers or employees. Not white collar or blue collar or no collars. We are business in America. And every day we awake to the same challenges. But at Prudential, we're helping companies everywhere find new solutions to manage risk, capital, and employee benefits so American business can get on with business. Pitt Panthers in the first quarter on top of the Cardinals 7 0. Let's take a look at some potential finalists for our Capital One Cup impact performance of the week. Teddy Bridgewater last week in Morgantown. Nice performance. He had a heck of a football game. 21 of 27 for 246. He had one touchdown and one interception, Mike, and he completed his first 10 passes in the football game. Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, saying that uh, he probably burned three so that. Those numbers 21 of 27 could have been 24 of 27. Log on to CapitalOneCup.com to vote for this week's impact performance. True freshman from Miami takes the field for his second possession. Two for three, 20 yards and an INT in his first possession. Patience is the key for Teddy Bridgewater, especially in a day like today, Mike, where the winds seem like they're gusting and he's going right into the wind. Throws this one. Chichester had it. Turned before he had control of the football and it popped out of his hands. I think Teddy may have fooled the big tight end, the 6'8 tight end, the senior from Westchester, Ohio. It looked like he was going to go to the flat and then he just 
turn his shoulders towards big number 11. He just couldn't come down with the football. No excuse for not catching it and being getting positive yardage on first down. Second and 10 now. Vic Anderson stays in the backfield for the Cardinals. This is Anderson. Hurdles cuts back up to the 22. Aaron Donald make the stop. With number 97, gain of three. How about number 97, huh? He's a sophomore, six feet, 270. His first start last week, John, and he has seven sacks already. He's emerging as one of the best players on the defensive side of the football for the Panthers. And only six foot tall, but 270 pounds. He gets teased for his body shape. But when he's going after the quarterback and making tackles for loss, nobody's saying anything to big number 97. He's drawing comparisons to Mick Williams, the co-defensive player of the year back in 09. Bridgewater. This one's complete. It's Michael Lee Harris with his 29th catch this year. Leads the team. Gain of six, but it's going to bring up a punting situation. No surprise. The Panthers lead the conference in third down efficiency on defense at 32.4%. So they hold Louisville to three and out deep in their own end, and they want to use this wind to their advantage. They're going to call timeout with 10 seconds remaining to try to make the Louisville special teams kick into this stiff breeze. Beautiful sunny day, but that breeze is pretty stiff. See some of the flags up on top of that scoreboard. They're standing straight out, and Pittsburgh had that wind, of course, in the first quarter. But as you said, Todd Graham hoping that, uh, well, now forcing uh, the Louisville Cardinals to punt against that wind. 60 degrees, sunshine, about 21 miles per hour. Looks even worse than that as far as especially if you're the punter. <laughs> yeah it's it's not a good feeling I would only imagine but uh, it's a situation where you you just want to get a clean one off and then let your coverage team do the work and for the other side of the football Todd Graham just wants to field this cleanly they've had some trouble in special teams this season. Jones the true freshman back standing at the 35 yard line Josh Blazer the senior will punt. Hits, rolls at about the 41. So 30-yard punt for Josh Blazer against that stiff breeze, and that's going to be the final play of the first 15 minutes here on Senior Day in Louisville, Kentucky. Todd Graham and the Pitt Panthers feeling close. Well, they have the lead, John, 7-0. Doing a great job of being efficient. That's the key word for the Panthers on offense, and so far through 15, it's been okay. You need power and skill to play in Division I college sports. But to be the best, take spirit, courage, and a unity of purpose to which many aspire, but few can claim. It's a new year and a new competition to determine the best in men's and women's college sports. With $400,000 in student-athlete scholarships at stake, the Capital One Cup, the race starts now. To learn more, go to CapitalOneCup.com. Chevy Silverado, with best in class 4x4 available V8 fuel economy. Finally! From getting there to getting away from there, Chevy runs deep. The young man who suffered lifelong devastating injuries because of a careless driver deserved justice. The young daughter who suffered permanent brain damage as a result of negligence deserved justice. The young newlywed who endured catastrophic burns over 60% of her body because of a drunk driver deserved justice. Selena and Barnes, helping victims get justice. Named to the U.S. News List as a first tier best lawyers, best law firm for personal injury litigation. The choice is easy. Choose Selena and Barnes. 
Hi, I'm David Bromstead here with a quick technique to make your home sizzle with style. Stencils are a great way to create a pattern without committing to pricey wallpaper. The more contrast you have between the wall and the stencil color, the more drama. For a subtle effect, go for a tone on tone, barely there, but very sophisticated look. For a free two ounce color sample, log on to benjaminmore.com slash regional. You'd be shocked how much data you use in a month. Email, status updates, finding your way, uploading photos, downloading an app, an app, and another app. Kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, all stacking up until you reach your limit. And what happens if you go over? With Sprint, you don't have to worry. Only Sprint offers truly unlimited data. SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. Back in Louisville, the Pitt Panthers opening up, John, uh, very impressively going 80 yards on their first drive. Very efficient, 12 plays, 80 yards, 547 off the clock. And they get the freshman in the end zone. Bennett goes in from a yard out, but it's the defense that turned the tide early in this game. A nice interception by Carl Fleming. He undercuts from the outside linebacker position and turns Teddy Bridgewater's attempt in getting into the red zone and tying this game up backwards. So Tino Sinceri 4 of 4 for 32 in the air. 16 rushing yards. That's a key on the first drive for the Panthers. And so far Bridgewater 3 of 5. But that one interception keeps Louisville off the scoreboard. And that was Bennett's first touchdown. And uh, it was Fleming's first INT this year for the Pitt Panthers. And Zach Brown and Isaac Bennett in the backfield now for the Panthers. First possession. Actually have uh, the ball at the 41 yard line. And the give is to Bennett, the, the big freshman. He only had six carries coming in, John, but Calvin McGee, the offensive coordinator, said this guy is fast, he's big, he's powerful. You're going to see his reps going up. He's got a blend of everything they're looking for out of a freshman. He's a talented kid, blend of power and speed, and they're very excited to get him in the rotation. They need to because they need to pick up the slack that's left from Ray Graham. Sari fires and Devin Street has his second catch. Hey fans went a VIP trip to this year's Beef O'Brady's Bowl with a four night stay at Trade Winds Resorts on St. Pete's Beach. Premium tickets to the game access to bowl events and more. Enter to win at BeefO'Brady'sBowl.com today. Cardinals of course with a victory will be bowl eligible. Pitt Panthers they have two more shots they come in at four and five two and two in league play. Double tights, third and one. Sinceri pushed back. And he's not going to get it. Nice job by that Louisville defense. As Sinceri tried to roll to the left, and uh, good pressure just pushed him out of his comfort zone. Boy, I'm not so sure I agree with the call on third and short. You have a freshman back that could go against a defensive front that's been depleted. You want to try to move them off the football. The Panthers decide to roll Sinceri out to the wide side of the field. I don't think that helps the junior quarterback. Good job, but you have to credit Louisville defensively. They came, came into this game seventh in the conference on third down, but they find a way to get off the field. Yachtlick, Eli Rogers, the freshman, at the 15 with the fair catch, a 34-yard punt against the win. As we check in with Eamon downstairs. Well, you know, Mike, interesting. On the last series when the defense was on the sidelines, Charlie Strong walked over to its leader, Dexter Heyman, and he said, Dexter, you are trying to do too much. Relax, read your keys, make your play, do your job. Obviously, the message was delivered. Heyman making the big play on the third down. Thanks, Eamon. And John, uh, talking to Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator, it's, it's funny, so many times you hear defensive coordinators, and Charlie, of course, one of the best uh, during his days at Florida, just play your assignment football and everything's going to be OK. Huh? That's right. Just do your job. You have 10 other guys running around trying to get that defensive fit perfect for Charlie Strong and, and Vance Bedford, their defensive coordinator. Dominique Brown behind center down the shotgun. <laughs> Running that wild card. And he takes a wild leap up near the 20 yard line. Picks up three. But Antoine Reed came up from the corner to make the stop. 
And it looks like Dominic Brown's going to walk off a little gingerly on that side. He lands. He takes a big flip. This is a play that they scored on with giving it last week to Sonoris Perry. But you can see how awkwardly that Brown lands on his back. Let's hope he's okay for the Louisville side on the Louisville sideline. So Victor Anderson replaces him in that Louisville backfield. Second and long now, second and seven for the Cardinals. Bridgewater felt the pressure, makes something out of nothing. Miles Karajin makes the stop, picks up three. But it could have been worse, but it's going to bring up a third down. And remember, Teddy Bridgewater is not a one-man band. He needs some help. And Jeremy Wright, the sophomore from Claremont, Florida, he's out today. So now Dominic Brown is out, it looks like, for a couple of plays. So he's going to need Victor Anderson and Sonoris Perry in that receiving core to pick up the slack. Bridgewater finds this man and he does a nice job because the reason I give up there were a lot of white jerseys at that line of scrimmage coming up to put pressure on Michael Lee Harris is coming from underneath and if he makes one man miss on the edge and I believe that was Antoine Reed with the tackle he's going to go for a touchdown that was just a good job of staying patient in the pocket by Teddy Bridgewater and as you said Mike a lot of white jerseys coming up the middle but he had the patience to deliver under duress that's what he's done over the last three or four weeks and now you see number 10 Dominic Brown back in the football game. Brown penalty flag down Brown all the way up near the 39 he's close to the first down mark but again a penalty flag drops at about the 27 he picked up 10 on the play shot block offense number 53 penalty is half the distance to the goal first down Jake Smith the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville Alabama. And this is a, a pressure rating that Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, does every week. And last week against West Virginia, you can see how efficient, 93%, 31 of 33 in all these different categories. The one I like is under two minutes in the fourth quarter, six for six, four for four in two-minute situations. That's where they won the football game in pressure situations, and that's where Teddy Bridgewater really showed what he can do as a young quarterback in a hostile environment in Morgantown. Overall, 77% of his passes were completed last week against West Virginia. Sonoris Perry, he's the fastest in that stable of running backs. But Quentin Smith, the freshman from Orlando, Florida, wraps him up for the tackle. A loss of five on the play. Pitt Panther defense over the last couple of plays really trying to pressure the pocket pressuring the running game trying to send guys where they least expect it. We talked to Keith Patterson earlier in the week the co defensive coordinator and he talked about how we need to keep Teddy Bridgewater in our sights in the pocket but we need to stop the run first. Louisville. Well second and twenty nine and Teddy Bridgewater said. That's a long way to go. Let's uh, talk this over. So they use up one of their timeouts. Both Pittsburgh and Louisville using up one of their three timeouts in the first half. Charlie Strong is Cardinals trailing by a touchdown here in the second. Johnson's, right? Yeah. Which house is yours? The one with the Silverado out front. So, what do you do? Well, uh... Nice. <laughs> and Bingo was his name. <laughs> I... For those who live life for a living, the Chevy Silverado. From worksite to home front, Chevy runs deep.
Hey, <laughs> everyone's eating tacos outside Bill's office. <laughs> Don't you think that's some information I would like to know? I like tacos. You invited Eric? I thought Eric gave you the creeps. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Don't be left behind. Get it faster with 4G. AT&T. Call Tuesday. Caesars Atlantic City, routinely spectacular. We're good at tailgating, but to be great, well, you need a little coaching. That's why I come in. Coach, are we running super cold activation today? Always, Gary. Only Coors Light tells you when your beer goes from cold to super cold. Frost brewed on three. One, two, three. Frost, Frost brewed. brewed. Ice down those Coors Lights, baby. Ice. When it comes to big refreshment, we could all use a little coaching. Nice crossing pattern, Randy. We're tailgating at the next level. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Cross Brute Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. A little help, guys. Today's Big East Network game is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Vote now at coachoftheyear.com. AT&T, Rethink Possible. Groove Caught by GE, never sticky or stringy, never cracks or crumbles, always paintable. The 2012 Chevy Silverado HD. And by Tradewinds Resorts, the place to kick off your beach getaway. And we take a look at the Louisville Zoo. And, uh, boy, that's uh, kind of a neat uh, looking. Oh, oh, you got a towel? Pass the towel over here. I don't know if he wants to uh, get out to play with us or get out to maul us. Polar bear at the zoo. Quite comfortable right here, really, in the uh, <laughs> broadcast booth. Panthers on top, seven zip. Todd Graham looking to uh, climb to five and five on the year. Right now it's second and 29 for Teddy Bridgewater and the Louisville Cardinals with uh, Victor Anderson in that pistol formation. Anderson, nowhere to go. Wrapped up by Jazz Alexi, the fifth year senior from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Loss of three. Alexi, a former walk on. So that's one of the toughest things he ever had to swallow is being a walk on because he was overlooked during the recruiting process. Well, he's done a great job throughout his Pittsburgh career and he read that screen beautifully to even move the Cardinals back deeper into their own end zone or closer to their own end zone third down in 32 now but it's just a nice job of staying along that offensive line reading those linemen letting him through and then finding the pass receiver third and 32 what do you call here John uh, quarterback draw possibly. <laughs> Just get some breathing room for the punter. There he goes. Good call. He's got some green. He's got a lot of green. Bridgewater all the way up over the 30 yard line. Had to get to the 39 for the first down, but he picks up 26. How about some breathing room there for the punter? That's exactly what, what you want to do in that situation. No need to try to push the football down the field. Quarterback draw. You've got an athletic quarterback, a guy that's going to protect the football. Get what you can, and now you have that wind at your back, Mike. So the second quarter, the, the punting unit, the special team, should be able to punt and get a 30, 40, 50 yarder in this situation. Blazer. Jones lets it hit. Waved his arm for the fourth fair catch. I'm not sure if the sun got in his eyes. It's a 50 yard punt at the time. Down by uh, Sonoris Perry, the backup running back. So Todd Graham back at Tulsa in 07, set four NCAA records. Anything? No. How about now? Nope. The Chevy Silverado best-in-class 4x4 available V8 fuel economy. Finally! From getting there to getting away from there, Chevy runs deep. An accident. 
doesn't have to slow you down. With better car replacement, available only with Liberty Mutual Auto Insurance, if your car is totaled, we give you the money for a car one model year newer. To learn more, visit us today. Responsibility. What's your policy? Hi, I'm Tony Ticante, general manager here at Lexus of Massapequa, Long Island's number one volume Lexus dealer. We surveyed our customers over the last six months to find out why they bought from us. And on the board are the top three reasons. The number three reason why people bought from Lexus of Massapequa? Best customer service! The number two reason the survey says? Best value in service! And the top reason people bought from Lexus of Massapequa? The survey says? Best experience! Finally, what are you demanding from your luxury car dealer? Well, there you have it. Lexus of Massapequa, where excellence is predictable. You've seen cars customized and restored. Now it's time for Automat in Hicksville to do yours. Over 50 years in business, winner of the National Trimmer of the Year Award. We're your one-stop shop for auto interiors and tops, mechanical and electrical service, paint and body work, custom audio, video, rims, accessories, and more. Visit Automat in Hicksville, the largest and most recommended in the business. We'll restore the passion you feel for your car. 8.34 to go before halftime. Moving very quickly. 7-0 Pittsburgh on top as we take a look at the downtown area. And the river separating uh, Kentucky and Indiana. Let's take a look at our Ameriprise Financial Big East headlines. And, of course, the number one topic this season, it seems like, has been that realignment. Uh, the Big East, of course, getting set to invite Boise State Navy Air Force for football only. SMU, Houston, Central Florida for all sports. And for the first time, I see BYU surfaced. I don't know if there's any interest by the Cougars, but at least... They're in the headlines now as well. And that may be holding this whole process up. Boise and Air Force may be looking for another partner so that they can have or create another Western partner in the Big East Conference. And at the bottom, though, you see South Florida knocking off Syracuse in the Dome, 37-17. South Florida snapping a four-game skid. And uh, Syracuse now still trying to become bowl eligible for the second straight year under Doug Marone. Zach Brown gets the call. Stopped by William Savoy, picks up two on the play. And Mike, if you're Louisville defensively right now, you want to make another three and out right now to change the field position. Flip the field for their offense and make it a little bit easier for Teddy Bridgewater. So it's up to Savoy and Phil Lawn and Heyman and Preston Brown, those guys up front to make plays for their offense that's on the sidelines. There's a jump, number six. That's a Greg Scruggs, the senior defensive end. Defense number six, underbated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, second down. So they'll bring up a second and short, second and three. Attention golfers and club pros. Online registration is now open for the 2012 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com to sign up and find a participating course near you. So the Panthers, 12 plays, 80 yards, and a touchdown on their first drive. Sinceri, Shanahan, and Shanahan rumbles up over the 45, dropped at about the 48-yard line. Picks up 24 play, 24 yards on the play. That's a receiver that you love to find. 6'5", 225 pounds. Mike Shanahan's going to be coming from the top of your screen. Just a little under route, but he's got good speed for a big guy, and he's able to move the chains for Tino Sinceri. Zach Brown wrestled down at the midfield stripe. Might have got into a Louisville territory. Picked up three. Hakeem Smith came up from that safety spot to make the tackle. Been impressed with Zach Brown so far. How hard he runs in between the tackles. He's not shy to square those shoulders up. Seven rushes for 41 yards and close to six yards per carry on the afternoon. Mentioned 12 plays, 80 yards, and a touchdown their first drive. The last two drives ended in two punts. And Sarri dances away from the rush. And instead of going out of bounds, tries to pick up more. Wrestled down by Dexter Heyman, but Sinceri picks up six more. Well, anytime something breaks down, you'd like to make positive plays, and that's what Tino did on that particular play. Dexter Heyman makes a nice open field tackle, but Sinceri had everything going down around him and it wasn't going the way they liked as 
his offensive lineman Ryan Schlepper gets back to the line of scrimmage and that's a that's a part of the this offense that cannot include an injury right now is the offensive line Mike they've been banged up this entire season nine games six different lineups up front for Pitt. There's the pitch Jones. He's going to be stopped. Josh Bellamy came up the wide receiver not playing some defense makes the stop. Big that, grin on the Bedford's face. Absolutely. And anytime the Panthers take the football off of the line of scrimmage on third down, it's advantage Louisville because they have the advantage in speed. And a good job of Josh Bellamy coming from the offensive side of the football to play corner and reading that. You can see the, the face of his head coach, Charlie Strong, loving what he sees. Fourth and two. Todd Graham wants to go for it. Mark Myers. The big redshirt freshman from Cleveland at quarterback. Here, here right comes now. the quick kick, Mike. Well, the penalty flag was dropped right before the pooch punt. Prior to the snap, timeout, Pittsburgh. That is our second timeout to have. It's a miscommunication there. So the pooch punt, uh, they'll come back and try to get after the flag. What do you expect to see when we come back? A little bit more of the same. I think the Panthers <laughs> are going to punt it away. Panthers on top, five minutes and ten to go before halftime. Johnson's, right? Yeah. Which house is yours? The one with the Silverado up front. So, what do you do? Well, uh... Nice. And Bingo was his name. I... For those who live life for a living, the Chevy Silverado. From worksite to home front, Chevy runs deep. Big East football on SNY is brought to you by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. You'd be shocked how much data you use in a month. Email, status updates, finding your way, uploading photos, downloading an app, an app, and another app. Kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, all stacking up until you reach your limit. And what happens if you go over? With Sprint, you don't have to worry. Only Sprint offers truly unlimited data. It's Big East football on SNY. Get all your first half highlights, analysis, and the latest conference updates and news from our team of Big East experts on the Sprint Halftime Show. Coming up only on SNY. SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. All season long, champion athletic wear will probably showcase stadium traditions from around the Big East Conference. This afternoon, uh, we take a look at the Louisville Card March. About two minutes or two hours and 15 minutes before the game, the Cardinals exit their buses, walk through the crowd, through the green lots, make their way into the stadium, down across the field, into the locker room. There's a champion on Facebook. Uh, show us your game face for a chance to be featured in a future broadcast. Champion, it's how you play. Expecting a sold out crowd of 55,000 plus here inside Papa John's Cardinal Stadium today. 5-10 to go before halftime and 7-0 and Todd Graham now facing a fourth down and two. And it looks like uh, the regular punt team's coming in, John. And I would be more worried about the regular punt team than I would be that quick kick because the Louisville Cardinals special teams have been pressuring the punter. It looked like on the last two occasions, they came very close to blocking a punt. Third straight punts for Yaklik. His last one went 50. Eli Rogers, fair catch, called, and fumbled the football. He jumped on top of it. A 28-yard punt. Eli Rogers, the true freshman, 
I'm not sure if he took his eyes off it or it's it that just wind, tanked in the wind. I think the ball just came down like a rock, and he didn't expect it to to drop like that. He felt like it would carry to him, and he made the play. No one around him, and that ball just drops out of the air very quickly. He's very fortunate to get on the football. You can see plenty of room to field the football, but his feet stop, and that ball drops out of the sky, and he's just lucky to get on that for the Cardinals. Yeah, Mark Jubilato, redshirt freshman fullback, was the closest uh, to it for Pitts. But the Cardinals trailing by a touchdown now with five minutes to go. Bridgewater comes out firing. Chichester has it at the 25. They're going to go up tempo on offense, try to get a little rhythm started on offense for Teddy Bridgewater and the 10 guys that surround him offensively. Again, it's complete. Again, it's Chichester up near the 40. Runs out of bounds at the 38. 13 more for Josh Chichester. Panthers gamble. They bring a short side blitz, and that's a perfect job of adjusting by Chichester. Good vision by Teddy Bridgewater. Takes advantage of the wide open receiver to the short side of the field. Bridgewater dancing penalty flag down he throws it away almost picked off by Brandon Lindsay he just lost his footing Mike or he walks into the end zone possibly with that interception chop block offense number 10 penalty is half the distance to the goal first down that's the fourth penalty now they come in the most penalized team in the league 71 coming in so they have 75 now this year Brown's in the backfield. There's the chop block right there on the defensive lineman, Aaron Donald. Wasn't much of one, but he did go down below the waist, and that's going to get a penalty. Four penalties on the Cardinals today for 46 yards. Well, you'd mentioned Donald, only six feet tall, 270 pounds. I'm not sure how you block someone like that. I would find in. a place on the turf as well, yeah. <laughs> First and 25. Another completed ball up near the 30, over the 30. Eli Rogers, no, it's Jared David. Gain of 10. Davis, the sophomore from Tyrone, Georgia. That's his first catch this afternoon. 10 on the season for Davis for over 90 yards now, and the Cardinals trying to get that momentum, still trying to get up tempo in this series. Pressure from the outside. Dumps it off. Victor Anderson. Anderson up to the 45 yard line has to get to the 47 for the first picked up 13 and if I'm the Panthers I back off at Teddy Bridgewater with the pressure because right now the offensive line is doing a nice job picking it up and Teddy can extend plays and find the open guy you have to make him settle in the pocket and cover I, I lean toward coverage more than pressure. Anderson tries to ride that wave to no avail as Kanan Mosley Smith, the true freshman from Pittsburgh, makes the initial contact. No gain. Another big body there. Mosley Smith, six feet, 295 pounds. And remember, Mike, this is the same situation where Charlie Strong wanted to fake the punt against West Virginia last week. It was fourth and it's kind of similar situation. They had one set up. I'm not so sure if they do for the Panthers, but they had one specifically set up, and that's why the Panthers are calling timeout right now. Pittsburgh. They were talking to Charlie yesterday, said, oh, we had it, too. We had it. Yeah. But the uh, they dropped the yellow flag, and uh, they had to do it all over again. Charlie Strong uh, finishing seven and six uh, the co coach of the year last year during his uh, rookie season. Now he's got his team on a roll but they're averaging twenty seven points a game over the last three games now still looking for their first points with two forty three to go. Let's update uh, the Big East standings now brought to you by the Belk Bowl and Cincinnati taking on West Virginia now Cincinnati would have to lose twice 
for Louisville because of the head to head competition. But uh, how do you see the race finishing up? Jeff? I think Cincinnati's in the driver's seat. I think that they're on a roll right now and especially with that defense that was really run and thrown upon last year. They've come out and they turn it over for their offense and Zach Kolaris if he can stay away from the turnovers. They can feed Isaiah Pete in the pass game the screen game as well as running it between the tackles. That looks like a very good football team right now. Charlie Strong saying yesterday they're not worried about the league championship right now. Just take it one step at a time. Blazers punt taken by Jones. Fair catch at the 15 yard line. So a 40 yard punt this time by Josh Blazer. Senior day. Blazer one of the 16 seniors playing their final game in front of a sold out crowd. Trying to make it four straight. And Mike other than that uh, first drive by the Panthers that went 12 plays 80 yards and took close to six minutes off the clock. The Louisville defense has done a nice job fighting their injury bug up front trying to get linebackers to rush the passer doing what they can staying in nickel most of this first half and, and limiting the Panthers and Tino Sinceri to seven points. Boy they sure are dinged up huh but they're still number one scoring defense number one in total defense they've done a remarkable job with the band-aids as far as getting those guys on the field. Sinceri keeps it and he picks up the first down nice fake by Tino Sinceri picks up 12 yards Mike we talked about this at the opening of this football game for this offense to move you have to have quarterback running and you have to get not 20 or 25 yards but 10 8 15 if you can when you can and that was successful on first down Isaac Bennett Bennett stopped at the 30 that True freshman. How about the numbers for him in high school, huh? 9.6 yards a carry. Five catches for 182. That's 36 yards a catch. This guy could be a stud. Well, they love what they see, and he just hasn't had a chance to get on the field with Ray Graham. Everybody's All-American that went out after eight games, and he was second in the country. So now Bennett's going to get more playing time along with Zach Brown. Bennett stays on the field. I guess uh, Ray Graham, that would be a stud with a capital S. Huh? Yeah, that's all capitals. <laughs> Jones in motion. Bennett, there he goes. Calvin Mc McGee saying he's got power, he's got speed. He's going to be a good one. He's up to the 50, a 19-yard gain before Hakeem Smith makes the stop. And Mike, I'm going to ask, I'm going to add burst to those adjectives. It looked like he was shot out of a cannon. He reminded me of, a, of another young freshman that used to wear number 34, a little lighter than Craig Ironhead Hayward, but <laughs> one of those guys that can run you over. Sinceri, he's going down. That's the 40th time this year that the pit quarterback's been sacked. And for the Louisville Cardinals, that's their first sack. It's DeAndre's Mount, the freshman, gets his first. It's a loss of 10. DeAndre's Mount does a nice job of pressuring the pocket this time as well as number 99 Jermaine Brooks he was coming up the middle this pit offensive line could not hold out those two players and they sack Sinceri for a big loss on first down sack 40 times hard to believe Rutgers sacked 61 times last year there's the freshman pounding his way over the uh, 45 up to the 47 Smith makes a stop again so Bennett picks up nine more so Pittsburgh no timeouts left 25 seconds to go. Well they're going to take one shot here on third down to see if they can get it. At field goal range would be inside the 25 yard line. You'd have to take a shot at the end zone. Sinceri. Nice job coming up to make the stop again. It's number one Josh Bellamy. And uh, that's going to be the final play now of the first half. We're coming up on the Big East Network halftime report in Jimmy's Corner with uh, Victor Anderson. We'll have our Big East breakdown as we take a look at a wild card for the Louisville Cardinals and the first half highlights and stats. But we played 30, only seven points scored, John. Yeah, that very first drive of the Panthers, 12 plays, ends up in the end zone. And it's a situation where head coach Todd Graham trying to tell his Pitt Panthers they've played well in the first half, but they have to pick it up in the second half. That's what's been getting the Panthers throughout this season, the second half of football games. And Todd Graham saying he understands why the Pitt fans are frustrated. He doesn't blame them, but he says he doesn't apologize because uh, when they turn the corner, they're going to be exciting and they're going to be fun. We talked about the fact that two 500-yard games this year, the first at Pitt since 2000, but 
They've also had a 120 yard game against Utah. They open up the game today with an 80 yard drive and that's the only touchdown as we check in with Eamon who's standing by with Coach Graham. Coach the opening drive you marched right down the field. What's going to be the key to getting that rhythm back on offense. Well you know we've been moving the ball up and down the field. We just uh, have not been able to convert on third down. We just got to keep doing what we're doing. Defense needs to keep that goose egg up there. That was a good half. It's a very good defensive football team. It's two real good defenses going at it. You mentioned the goose egg. What pleased you the most about your defensive effort. I just think think just how they're playing you know uh, getting after it. Uh, we we're creating a lot of negatives. The biggest thing I like about our football teams being disciplined and not not having penalties. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Mike. All right, thanks a lot, Eamon. Halftime, 7 nothing. Uh, Pittsburgh on top of your thoughts for the first 30 minutes. I think the biggest key going into the second half for Teddy Bridgewater is to combat that pressure that Pitt has been trying to display off the edge. If Pitt continues to bring pressure, I think that Teddy Bridgewater may take that to his advantage, but I like the way the Panthers are playing. The offensive line has not been a liability, and I like the one-two punch in the backfield of Zach Brown and, and Bennett, the young freshman. And that Louisville defense, uh, they've settled down after giving up an 80-yard 12-play drive on Pittsburgh's first possession. So it's senior day. Todd Graham in his first year as the head coach of Pittsburgh. They have the lead at 10-7 to nothing. And the Louisville Cardinals, first time in three games, they don't score on their first possession. Halftime is coming up right after this. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sprint Halftime Show. Jonah Schwartz alongside Don McPherson, Sean Mulcahy. 7-0 pit at the half over Louisville. And this is quite a bit of a surprise. Louisville had done a very good job starting quickly in their previous few games. This was a surprising first half. Yeah, it was. It's a very slow start and Louisville a little bit sloppy on Louisville's side of the football. Yeah, I'm surprised that Louisville's defense right now giving up 114 yards on the ground. 40 yards apiece for Tino Sinceri and Zach Brown. Yeah, and you know what? It all started for them early. Pitt. The opening drive, getting some things done, ended up in an early touchdown for them. Yeah, I think when you talk about Zach Brown and, and, and Tino Sinceri, I think that's been the, the key. Is Sinceri take, making the decision to run with the football at the right times and a couple of design runs as well. You know what else has been interesting? Uh, the turnovers that Louisville's had. They've got one turnover, and they're also they've got five penalties to Pittsburgh, zero penalties. So Pittsburgh's really playing good football right now. Well, were you struck by the ball balance on this opening drive and ended up in this Isaac Bennett one-yard touchdown run? Yeah, I was, and we talked about this earlier uh, about uh, Pittsburgh's offense, and it's been that high-octane offense that we've expected to see. They slowed things down. They they play well in the first half. Second half has been a problem for them, and so far they're playing they're playing exactly how they're playing true to form all season long. You know, Louisville, we know the offense had been good with young Teddy Bridgewater, but we also knew Pittsburgh was going to try to bring a lot of pressure. And in some cases, Louisville, Sean, has done a good job picking up the blitz. Yeah, they've, they've gotten a, a few blitzes here with the Sam and Mike coming up the middle and the outside, and you also saw a corner blitz in the first quarter. So you can see Pittsburgh trying to do some strategic moves against Bridgewater to rattle his cage, but he's been somewhat poised, although he does have the interception. What do you think? Do you think he's handled the blitz well? I mean, it's funny. They haven't They've done a good job picking it up, but he still has not been quite as good as he's been in the past. He, he has not been as good as he's been in the past. This interception was a bad read between quarterback and receiver. We talked about those those excellent receivers earlier. That was a bad read between those two. But I think they've done a good job up front of picking up the blitz. But I think Teddy Bridgewater is starting to look like a freshman quarterback trying to figure out where the defense is coming from. I mean, you look at the first half drive there, not very impressive at all. So is this a simple case as a guy – didn't have as good of a first half as we've been used to seeing, or is there something more in terms of a defense now has a lot of tape on him and maybe adjusting to something? I, I think that's the key is that yeah. the defense has a lot of tape on him, and you know where a, a rookie or a freshman quarterback is vul vulnerable. You can see the plays where he has trouble, whether it's looking to the weak side or going through his progression, whether or not he's his feet are on, on in the right timing with his progression. That is, he doesn't see what he wants. He starts to take off and run, and right now Teddy Bridgewater is watching the defense more than he is watching where he needs to go with the football. As a defensive player what what would you have picked up here and, and be able to adjust to, against a quarterback like this well you know he's starting to run the ball a lot more so that can be a little frustrating as a defensive lineman he's got 41 yards rushing in the first half so he's on pace to really have a good game rushing that irritates D linemen to the fullest because when you're running downfield after quarterback you're huffing and puffing and the next thing you know you got another play and you need a sub and it gets out of control so if they can keep doing that that'd be he, all right when he was playing he had a few more elbows. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I love I'm used to seeing defensive linemen irritate 
excited when it's bacon, egg, and cheese in the morning is not right. That's all I'm going to say right there. We are just getting started here on the Sprint Halftime Show. Coming up, Cincinnati, West Virginia, big game in the conference. Can the Bearcats stay on top of the standings? And an emotional scene, Penn State and Nebraska, as the Nittany Lions somehow try to get back to some form of normalcy in a situation where there really hasn't been any. The Sprint Halftime Show, back after this. Pitt in the game you're watching here on SMY against Louisville. Pitt's defense has certainly been great so far. Are you expecting more of the same from them in the second half? You really are. You can tell that they have a beeline on, on, Teddy, on Teddy Bridgewater. They're going to continue their defensive game plan. Yeah, they got to push for some more turnovers, uh, and they got to stop the run because right now Louisville's got 80 yards on the ground, and that's not good enough for them. No, and we'll see if Teddy Bridgewater, you know, it's one thing where we've seen this guy have good games, but can he bounce back? That is also a key with a young quarterback. No question about it. I can tell you this. We will bounce back to be here for the Coors Light Post Game Show. For Sean and Don, I'm Jonas. Enjoy the second half, everybody. Welcome back to the Big East Network Game of the Week presented by PNC. There you see the numbers. It's halftime, 7 0 Pittsburgh, sitting on top of the Louisville Cardinals. Mike Leeson along with John Congemi, Amy McEnany, and uh, John, look at the first half numbers uh, for the quarterback, except for the INT. It's amazing how equal or, or comparable they are. Well, they've been running the football very effectively, and, and you're right, throwing the football as well. Both quarterbacks trying to do what they can to keep a little bit more rhythm going with their offenses, and that they need some help. They need the running game. It's not an, an easy day to throw the football with the wind whipping around Papa John Stadium, so both the young quarterback and Teddy Bridgewater and Tino Sinceri have to make plays in the second half. Now Bridgewater, 9 of 11, 71 yards. Sinceri, 8 of 11 for 70 yards. Let's head downstairs and check in with Eamon moments ago, caught up with Charlie Strong. Coach, what's going to be the key to getting your offense going in the second half? We just got to make plays. Penalties are stopping the drive. We just got to play better. Defense made adjustments, shutting them down after that drive. What's your impressions of the way your defense is playing right now? Well, the first drive we didn't play well, but just defensively, we got to create some turnovers, get some negative yards plays. Coach, thanks for your time. Mike? All right, thanks a lot, Eamon. Charlie Strong looking for that uh, fourth straight win, which would uh, make them bowl eligible. As Kevin Harper uh, tees it up and gets ready to kick off this uh, second half here from Louisville. Final home game as we see Sonoris Perry and Dominique Brown. A couple of sophomores back to receive the kick. Well for Louisville it's imperative to move the football and move it with authority. They have not been inside the pit 35 yard line in the first half. They need to try to get closer to the red zone or create some big plays. Some chunk yardage plays on their offense. Dominique Brown just inside the 20 yard line. A little spin move up to the 25 penalty flag drop and flying in at the 30. It's a five yard return but again the penalty flag dropped at about the 30 yard line. During the return the only go block in the back return team number one 10 yard penalty first down. That's Josh Bellamy. We've seen that young man play offense. We've seen him play defense came up with a big defensive play here in the first half and now guilty of the infraction. Teddy Bridgewater 9 of 11 for 71 yards in that one interception but he's rushed for 41 yards the bulk of that rushing yards coming on that quarterback draw when the Cardinals were backed up third in a country mile next to their own goal line so now Teddy Bridgewater have to get some rhythm early in this pass offense I look for some of those other freshmen on the outside Mike Lee Harris and Devontae Parker to help him out five penalties now for the Louisville Cardinals as we get ready to open up the second half first play. First possession for the Cardinals. Victor Anderson in the backfield along with uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Anderson gets the call. Saw the hole, had a burst, and that hole closed as uh, Chaz Alexi makes the stop. He picks up four on the play. Well, this has been a physical football game, Mike, on both defensive fronts. They've trying to fight injuries on the Louisville sideline and the Pitt sideline, just trying to get some continuity with their defense, trying to come up with big plays. and. This game will be won in the trenches. Who wins the battle at the line of scrimmage? Who can control the football in the second half? Chichester in motion now. Anderson in the backfield. 
Chris White, the sophomore tight end in motion. Bridgewater goes the other way. Michael Lee Harris for the first down at the 30-yard line. Carl Fleming, who had the INT in the first half, uh, in coverage, but Harris picks up 11. One of those freshmen we talked about, freshman to freshman on the outside. Teddy Bridgewater, he had some rhythm like that in the first half. They moved the football, but when they got close to the 50-yard line, it seemed like they hit a brick wall. They couldn't put back-to-back -back positive plays together. Michael Lee Harris, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, Eli Rogers, all from Miami Northwestern High School. Bridgewater's now hit eight straights. Anderson just shy of the 35 as Miles Carrigan makes the stop. He picks up four more. And remember, Mike, this offense for Louisville, they're only averaging 19.9 points a game. And if you throw out the last two football games against Syracuse, they had 27. Against West Virginia, they had 38. They've only scored 52 points in the previous four games. So this is more of the norm for Louisville. They'd like to get back to those last two games where they were putting up, letting up the scoreboard. Bridgewater gets it out quickly. That's uh, Devontae Parker. So Parker, all the way up to the 45, Max Gruder makes the stop, but they pick up 12 as Parker has his first catch. Well, that'll excite this crowd inside of Papa John Stadium, and it'll get Charlie Strong a little bit more confident in his freshman on the outside making plays. Devontae Parker has been known to do that. Once you get him the ball in space, he can make you miss. He's a good size, 6'2", 180 pounds, but he's very agile on the outside. Mentioned Bridgewater 12 of 13 in the first half against West Virginia. He's hit nine in a row now as they approach uh, Pitt Panther territory. Bridgewater looking for White. And White just slipped. Couldn't catch up with the football, so that'll fall incomplete. And Teddy would like to have that one back. That was just one that came off a little bit. Off the side of his fingertips, it looked like that wind, that breeze just picked up again. That ball was pushed towards the pit goal line down the field. So it's a situation where you want to have controlled passing, but you like to frame those passes, Mike, down the field in between the tackle boxes or closer to the hash. When you get it outside, that wind looks like it's really affecting the football. And only the quarterbacks know, huh? <laughs> yeah. Watching on TV, you never have that feel. Here comes pressure. Bridgewater right down the middle of the field. Eli Rogers incomplete at the 10. Louisville taking a shot down the middle. That's the one you can control down the middle when that wind's blowing pretty good from right to left. You want to air it out down the middle. It looked like Eli made an adjustment, but he made the adjustment, and the ball looked like it moved over his shoulder so he made the right adjustment but then lost the football within the last couple feet of making that reception one for four third down last week Cincinnati just two of 13 on third downs against this Pittsburgh defense and Bridgewater in the pit territory, but won't be the first down. Alexi makes the stop. Seven yards on the play, but it's going to bring up a punting situation for the Cardinals. Well, there again, credit the Pitt Panthers on that play because as soon as Louisville got close to the 50-yard line, you don't make a play on that long one down the middle from Eli Rogers, and then the Panthers find a way to get off the football field on third down. Remember, they lead the conference. They're first in the conference in third down efficiency defensively. Jones standing at the 10, Blazer with the punt. It's high. And the Panthers will have it at the 20 yard line. So a 47 yard punt, net of just 27 that time as the, they kick it back into the end zone. Tino Sinceri all set to take his offense back on the field, holding on to that one touchdown lead here in Louisville. Introducing the 60 Seconds of Mayhem Sweepstakes. You can win a new car and kick a field goal at the All-State BCS National Championship for a boat, motorcycle, RV, and a home makeover. January 9th is going to be mayhem. Will you be there? Enter at AllStateCFB.com. I am 100% certain that I am overpaying for my home phone. Trust me, that's, that's a lot of money. I feel like I'm getting 
duped. Surprise, you owe this much this month. I discovered Vonage. I was like, okay, thank God. Stop paying too much for your home phone service. Sign up for Vonage now and get unlimited domestic calling for $9.99 for the first three months. Our best offer ends soon. Call now. I'm Cheryl Roberts, and this is the last bill. Before I switch to Vonage. They're here, the hottest new machines of 2012, just in time for the Polaris Holiday Sales Event. Get financing as low as 2.99% on all Polaris ATVs and side-by-sides, plus rebates up to $1,000. Incredible deals on legendary sportsmen, powerful rangers, and razor-sharp razors. Hurry to your participating Polaris dealer before December 31st for financing as low as 2.99% and rebates up to $1,000. Get the details at Polaris.com. a better caulk combining everything you've dreamed of toughness paintability and easy application with no sticky mess better ideas make everyone happy if i could get away i'd spend the day just letting go Tossing the air i'll do as i dare it's my oasis made to just let go For the most fun in the Florida sun, escape to Tradewinds Island Resorts, St. Pete Beach, Florida. Oh, just let go. Emily's just starting out and on a budget, like a ramen noodle every night budget. She thought Allstate car insurance was out of her reach until she heard about the value plan. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an Allstate agent. Today's Big East Network game is brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. The Capital One Cup. Learn more and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com. Bonnage. Sounds good. Tradewinds Resorts. The place to kick off your beach getaway. And by Honda Generators. Power for the ultimate tailgating experience. Sunny but windy day here in Louisville, Kentucky. Sold out crowd here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Still 7 up in Pittsburgh. Kino Sinceri, the quarterback of the Pitt Panthers, uh, always been a drop back passer. What's the, uh, the biggest transition uh, going to the spread for a quarterback? Well, I think getting into the shotgun, number one, with uh, consistency, you know, catching and throwing the football with quickness, and your footwork and timing in the pass offense. Everything changes when you go to this Todd Graham offense. So for Tino, it's been, you know, it's been feast or famine. It's been really good days or, or some you'd like to forget, but so far he's very efficient, 8 of 11 for 70 yards, and he's running the football effectively in this offense. Sinceri comes out firing Street all alone. Devin Street still on his feet inside the 30-yard line, dropped inside the 25. Mike Evans finally catches up with him. So Tino Sinceri comes up with a big, big play, 59 yards to Devin Street. Mike, we talked about feast or famine. This one's a big feast. Tino Sinceri does a great job of play action inside, and then Devin Street makes that inside move, goes for 59 yards, and they're knocking on the door, the Panthers are, at the Cardinals' 21-yard line. Coaching staff saying that Devin Street uh, starting to run the routes now the past two weeks, the way he, these routes were intended to be run. But again, none of these Pitt Panthers have played this offense before. Zach Brown. Stopped at the 16-yard line, picks up four. Randy Salmon makes the stop. Mike, points are at a premium in this football game, and right now it looks like the Wildcat formation or some different formation inside the red zone. Myers comes into the football game at quarterback, but points are at a paramount right now in a 7-0 game. You want to come away with some type of points here. Southpaw fires. Intended for Shanahan. Mike, that's a great play by Mike Shanahan to come in over the top. Andrew Johnson's complaining about offensive pass interference. We have to fight through. Everybody has a right to the football. Andrew and I think Johnson it's Johnson. 40,000 yeah, fans. If too. Johnson fights through, 
the wide receiver he's going to pick this football up now is he over the back I don't think so he's a big body at 6 5 Johnson only goes at 5 10 Johnson has to come through and make that play for Louisville's defense so now the Panthers face a third and six and Sari back in the shotgun fires over the middle Shanahan touchdown Pittsburgh And now listen to the boos from the Louisville fans after there was no flag on that previous play. Mike, I'm still trying to figure out why Mark Myers came into the football game to attempt that pass. It's bizarre. Tino Sinceri having a great day, and he found Shanahan down the middle for the touchdown to push the lead to 13 0. And the fans still complaining and standing here in Papa John Stadium about the Mike Shanahan previous play where he breaks up a would be interception. Shanahan three for 55 and his fourth touchdown this year as Harper's on for the kick. So the Pitt Panthers uh, take the first possession of the ball game 80 yards and they take their first possession of the second half in first score to open up a 14 0 lead. Andrew Johnson the quarterback on that previous play he was in perfect position to get the interception but Mike Shanahan did the smart thing what receivers are taught to do to come back and strip the football down now watch Shanahan this is from Mark Myers the backup quarterback Shanahan goes at 6 5 he's draped over him but he never makes contact with him and maybe that right arm was in there but he comes right back on the next play Tino Sinceri back in the football game he breaks the arm tackle of Mike Evans and goes in for the touchdown that's just a good back to back play by the junior receiver Mike Shanahan and a nice strike down the middle by Tino Sinceri. Mike I told you down the middle of the field is where you can control the football as a quarterback. That's where you want to make your bread and butter down the middle. You know John we talked about the fact that Sinceri was always a drop back passer under center. He's handled the criticism well the fans have been critical. The coach was critical for a while but he says you know what everybody knows who his dad is right friend of yours. Yeah. Sal Sinceri. Sal Sinceri. All American linebacker. And Tino said, believe me, I wasn't getting anything sugar-coated at home. <laughs> so I can take the criticism with the fans. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. It was harder from the home front than it would be on any fans in Pittsburgh. Sinceri, 10 of 13 for 146 and one touchdown. That drive goes four plays, 80 yards. The big play was to Devin Street for 59. Boy, against the wind, what a short kick this time. Dominic Brown over the 25. Stopped at the 32-yard line. Very short kick, a five-yard return. And uh, Randy Morris uh, makes a tackle on the kickoff uh, coverage team. And so the Cardinals now with 10 24 to go in the third quarter have decent field position trailing by a couple of touchdowns. Well now the goal for the Louisville offense is to get a couple first downs and regain that momentum. And once they get towards middle of the football field they have to find somebody that's going to make a play that that's a game changer. They have to find somebody that's going to break a, an arm tackle make somebody miss in the open field and change the momentum of this football game. Trip to the top of your screen now for Teddy Bridgewater. Felt the pressure, steps up. Boy, just slipped the tackle that time by Brandon Lindsay. And Max Gruder finally makes the stop. He picks up 12. Nice run by Teddy Bridgewater. And you can tell this Louisville offense through the first six games, the scoring was way down compared to the last three games, which they've won three in a row, 27 points. The rushing yards are up. The plays are down. But look at the red zone percentage, Mike, 90% wow. in the last three games. The only problem today is they haven't been in the red zone. Yeah, last week, uh, Bridgewater was 5 for 5 passing in the red zone against West Virginia. Now rushing the ball, 5 for 60 yards, the young freshman from Miami. Am I allowed to call him a young freshman? You yeah, say he's not maybe a freshman you are. Anymore? You okay. are. I'm not. <laughs> Victor Anderson, the old senior, rolls over the 45-yard line. Tom Thomas. Todd Thomas makes the stop. Charlie Strong down there talking to his middle linebacker, Dexter Heyman, one of 16 seniors playing his final game, and he's had a He's had a nice season. He really has. He's a, a pleasure to talk with. We had that opportunity a few weeks ago, and now Charlie Strong talking to him about a couple different strategy items in that last pit drive that try to keep them off the scoreboard and, and hold this lead at 14. Pocket collapses. 
And now Bridgewater pushed out of bounds just inside the 50. Todd Thomas again, a pickup of five, but number seven, Brandon Lindsay, was in hot pursuit. Good decision by Teddy Bridgewater not to force the issue down the field. Pitt had great coverage in the secondary, so he extends the play, uses his legs. He's done a nice job of running the football today. In the first half, he was well over 40 yards, and now he's continuing to pad that. The big play on third down. They have to find a way to stay on the football field, Mike, on third down. The Panthers, the last couple of opportunities, have found a way to keep Teddy Bridgewater on the sidelines. And now it looks like they may call a timeout here. Talk about it. Timeout, Louisville. Finish Facing a third and three. 14 to nothing, so we're going to take a uh, timeout as well. Inside Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, it's senior day for the Cardinals, but they trail by a couple of touchdowns with a three-game winning streak on the line. I wouldn't do that. Pay the check? No, I wouldn't use that single miles credit card. Hey, aren't you? Shh. I'm researching a role. Today's special, the Capital One Venture card. You earn double miles on every purchase. Impressive. Chalk is a lost medium. If you're not earning double miles, you're settling for half. Was that really necessary? Get the Venture card at CapitalOne.com and earn double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? Cover for me. I have an audition. Hey, I put some new shoes on and suddenly everything's right. I said, People choose to do the right thing. There's an insurance company that does that too. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? your hands could use a hand delta touch 2o technology is now in the bathroom another way delta is more than just a faucet see what delta can do back in louisville the pit panthers on top by a couple of touchdowns 832 to go in the third this week's Big East scholar athlete is brought to you by dr pepper 23 flavors dr pepper is always one of a kind pittsburgh's miles carrageen 3.624 overall gpa Named to the Capital One Academic All District Two team, uh, currently a graduate student in Pitt School of Education, and you might remember John last year, Kerrigan had a 56-yard fumble return against Louisville, stopped at the five-yard line, couldn't quite get into the end zone, but uh, he's been a uh, heck of a player for the Panthers on that defensive front. He's been a force up front, and he's hoping that uh, one of his partners can make a play here on third down for the Panthers' defense. Third and three. There's a little pitch inside. The helmets falling down. A couple of helmets came popping off that time. Aaron Donald's helmet came off. I saw two of them down there. Looks like Sahid Amoro's helmet came off as well for the Pitt Panthers. And more importantly, Mike, for Louisville, they get the first down they were looking for. So now the ball is on the other side of the 50-yard line, the Pitt side of the 50-yard line. Good job by... Brandon Lindsay of reading the initial play, but good tough running inside by Victor Anderson. So the Cardinals move the chains, looking for their first points here this afternoon after averaging 27 the last three games. Anderson hit hard from behind by Todd Thomas, picks up three. Well, here's where you try to create your mismatch offensively. You try to get your playmakers back in the football game. Devontae Parker, Michael Lee Harris, somebody that can make a defender miss going down the hash on the inside. 
Looks like Scott Radcliffe in the game as well, trying to take advantage of the middle of the football field. Well, Bridgewater, that pocket, almost picked off by Taglianetti. Boy, he had zeroed in on that football, just couldn't get his hands on it. You know, John, uh, Charlie Strong telling us the, the young football team right after this uh, replay. Well, Taglianetti may have been off to the races if he comes up with this football because there was nobody but Dominic Brown that had any type of speed that was going to catch Taglianetti. He's a ball hawk back there for the Panthers. Charlie Strong saying that uh, this team had to learn how to compete, had to learn how to win. Had to learn how to handle the winning on a three game winning streak down 14. What do they have to learn here? They have to convert again on third down only two of six on third down. That's up to Teddy Bridgewater right now making another play for the Cardinals offensively. Bridgewater doesn't like what he sees with that Pittsburgh timeout. defense. Another timeout Louis call. There's our second timeout of the half. Yeah. This will be a 30 second timeout. So Bridgewater we talked uh, over the last uh, well this is our fourth game with Louisville over the last five weeks we talked about all of his poise in the pocket. Well that alone in the third quarter to use up your second timeout that takes some some poise and some guts when you face your head. Coach. Well, yeah and this is a little bit uncharacteristic for for Teddy Bridgewater right now getting the plays in and out trying to see where he wants to go with the football. He's done an excellent job of making plays at the line of scrimmage. And what I mean by that is getting out of a bad play into a good play that time Teddy Bridgewater realized he didn't couldn't take the five yard penalty decides to burn their second of three timeouts in the second half so now they come back with a third manageable situation third and seven and Teddy Bridgewater still in control of this offense. Uh, Sean Watson the offensive coordinator did such a nice job of explaining this offense to us yesterday so basically what did Bridgewater see or what didn't he see out there. Well, I think he was just running out of time he wanted to get to another play but decided a timeout would be better than taking that five yard loss. Third and seven. Bridgewater this time he's going down. That's the first sack of the day for the Panthers but they're 30th this year. Alexi and Juan Price, the freshman, will have to share it. A loss of six. Charlie trying to get his team off the field, but this is just good pressure in the pocket. The Panthers bring a couple more players than you can block. Good job of pressuring the pocket. This is the key to beating Teddy Bridgewater, keeping him confined in the pocket and trying to make him make plays to beat you from there. Another fair catch by Jones at the 12 yard line. 36 yard punt, so 642 to go. Pittsburgh will have the football back with a couple of touchdowns. Cincinnati, West Virginia going at it in Cincinnati. 17 7, the Mountaineers on top, and Zach Kolaros, I'm told, was carted off the field. Wow. With a right leg injury. Well, that opens up the Big East Conference if, that, if, if Zach Kolaros cannot finish, not only finish the game today, but be a, an effective quarterback in that offense because. He makes it go for for the Bearcats. So Cincinnati. The only undefeated team right now in league play. Only one loss. They've won six straight since losing to Tennessee. Sinceri keeps it again. He's at the 15. Savoy and uh, Phylon are making the stop as uh, we take another look at that Big E standings now. As West Virginia has a 10 point lead 17 7 in Cincinnati. We mentioned the Louisville Cardinals. They need the Cincinnati Bearcats to lose twice because they they lose that head to head battle about a month ago in Cincinnati. And for the Pitt Panthers, they're just trying to keep alive, stay alive in the Big East Conference, looking for their third conference victory. And Pittsburgh has the backyard ball coming up in West Virginia next week. Cincinnati's going down. Another sack for Louisville. William Savoy. Picks up his fourth on the year, the second today for the Cardinal defense. Relentless pressure by William Savoy. He's going to come from the top of your screen and just beat the offensive tackle. And there you see, he looks like he was shot out of a cannon at Tino Sinceri. Big number 91, doing a great job behind the line of scrimmage, as you mentioned, Mike. Four sacks on the season. And now you feel this crowd come back in because they got it. They have Pittsburgh where they want them in third and long situations. This is where you can turn the football over if you're wearing a red jersey. Showing pressure. Here comes more pressure. Sinceri's going down again. Back to back sacks. And again, it's Savoy leading the attack. 
Three sacks today. They had three last week in Morgantown against West Virginia. On the last two plays, he's unblockable. Savoy's going to line up at the top of the screen again, and then right through the middle of the defense, he's going to come in, and nobody in a white jersey can block William Savoy. There's holding everywhere. You saw his jersey almost come undone. That was a great job of inside pursuit, and now you want to see pressure on a punter. This is a pressure situation. Against the win. Oh, my gosh. Eli Rogers had lined up at about the 30-yard line. And that punt by Matt Yawcliffe, who comes in averaging just under 42, second in the Big East, goes seven yards. Well, that's what happens when you win on third down, win on second down with sacks. That win again, we talked about it constantly in the first half. That win was, he was punting into the wind on that occasion, Mike. Now the Cardinals get it at the 11-yard line. Yaklik just comes right off and just clubs it dead across the side of his foot. And that ball goes from right to left, and the Cardinals feel good about being in the red zone for the first time today. Anderson lines up in the backfield. Gets the call. Keeps those legs moving inside the five, all the way down inside the two-yard line. Thomas makes the stop. Good, strong inside running by Victor Anderson on senior day. The senior getting it done. And credit that offensive line. Looked like a red jersey was on a white jersey moving that pile. And you can see the excitement from the senior. Back on October 15th, they couldn't convert against Cincinnati on second and three from the 26, a first from the 29, first and goal from the 10. But they say those days are behind them now. Running from the I formation. Anderson, touchdown! Rover! John, nice job by Jake Smith and Ryan Kessling on that right side of the line to give them just enough room to hurdle in. Well, you called it, Mike. That right side of that offensive line just walls down the Pittsburgh front seven, and Victor Anderson untouched for the touchdown. They take advantage of a, a poor punt and great field position. Phil Pot. He drills it through inside four minutes of third quarter. It's down to a touchdown. Seven-yard punt, but John, it all started with back-to-back -back sacks by that Louisville defense. Credit the defense. William Savoy, you called it, Mike, his fourth and fifth sack of the season. He was relentless on the Panthers quarterback, Tino Sinceri. They set up great field position for Victor Anderson on senior day. He gets into the end zone, 14-7 Pittsburgh, but Louisville starting to feel a little bit better. I feel duped. I feel cheated. Every month is a different story. That's why I needed to switch to Vonage. My folks are in India, my parents and my sister. We don't catch up on what happened this week. It's what are you doing today? Without Vonage, I wouldn't be able to talk to my mom on a regular basis. When you switch to Vonage, you can save so much money. I'm Sankrish Bala, and this was my last bill before I switched to Vonage. Get unlimited domestic and international calling from your home and mobile phones for only $9.99 for the first three months. Our best offer ends soon. Remember when Christmas was magical? When we all had a front row shoulder top seat at the parade. Let's get back there. Santa's Wonderland at Bass Pro Shops has what we've all been missing. With the arcades, crafts, even a picture with Santa, and it's all free. That's right, free. Time passes, hold on to Christmas. This week, use your Bass Pro Shops Outdoor Rewards Visa card and save 10% plus earn double points on your entire purchase. The USO supports the troops, so Papa John supports the USO. In honor of Veterans Day, Papa John's is giving you any large pizza with your choice of any of your favorite toppings, just $11. Or go to PapaJohns.com now and order the USO meal deal, and $1 will be donated to the USO, an organization dedicated to lifting the spirits of America's troops and their families. We made a lot of pizzas. Now we want to make a big difference. shocked how much data you use in a month. Email, status updates, finding your way, uploading photos, downloading an app, an app, and an
another app. Kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, all stacking up until you reach your limit. And what happens if you go over? With Sprint, you don't have to worry. Only Sprint offers truly unlimited data. Welcome back to the Big East Network Game of the Week presented by PNC. Inside four minutes, 14-7. Now Louisville cuts the deficit to a touchdown. Attention golfers and club pros. Online registration is now open for the 2012 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com to sign up and find a participating course near you. All right, John, we got the wind. They had the seven-yard punt. Charlie Strong's got his defense. What does Pittsburgh have to do to get rid of the wind? They need two first downs. There's three minutes and 59 seconds left to go in this third quarter. And Matt Yachlick, the pit punter, does not want to come back in the, in the end zone and attempt another punt because that last one goes seven yards and set up the Cardinals' only touchdown in the afternoon. Phil Potts. Jones, the freshman, watches this one sail over his head out of the end zone, and they'll start from the 20-yard line. You mentioned Yachlick. 42 yards average. It is average 27.8 after the seven yard punt. It's a, it's an awful day for special teams today. I'm talking about place kickers. If you're going into the win, especially punters, because not only does the punt get affected in the air, but when you drop the football to punt it, it moves. Yeah. And I think that's what happened to Yaklik in the end zone. He just hooked that thing and it went seven yards and sets up the easy touchdown by Victor Anderson. But that got this. Louisville Cardinal crowd up and going inside of Papa John Stadium and now we have a football game. We certainly do. You saw the flags this moments ago as we panned inside the stadium standing straight out. Zach Brown in the backfield with sincerity. Zach Brown. Nice job of weaving his way through that line of scrimmage up near the 25. He picks up four as we Head back downstairs with Amon. Well, Mike, to keep on the theme of the win, it's definitely picked up here even since that punt. It's much steadier now. It's going to be very tough for Tino Sinceri to throw the ball, maybe something short, but a deep pass I would not call right now with this win continuing to pick up and swirl here. Yeah, you wonder how deep he could throw it. The wind has really picked up. Brown again, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Picks up one. Mike Evans came up from the secondary along with Dexter Heyman. Panthers on third down again in this situation. They're trying to stay on the football field with this offense. They're three of eight on third down this afternoon. And they came into the, uh, to the game today, seventh in the conference, only at 34%. Panthers with a three game winning streak over these Louisville Cardinals. Sari over the middle has his man at street again up over the 35 big big third down play picks up 12 Mike great job of getting the play call by offensive coordinator Calvin McGee something in the middle of the football field that you can control the velocity you can control the direction of the football in a tough throwing environment today and the wind just swirling inside of this stadium street eight for 118 against Cincinnati last week. It's a big, big first down as Brown gets up over the 40, close to the 42-yard line. Street four for 85 here this afternoon. D.J. Butler and Hakeem Smith making the stop on Zach Brown, the fifth-year senior. The Panthers' goal was two first downs out of this drive. They need one more just so if, if anything happened and they stalled, they can at least have the win at their back when they get rid of the football. Here comes Zach Brown. Turn the corner nicely. As he put a little move. As he picks up 14 yards. Andrew Johnson. That's a nice job by Zach Brown getting to the outside and using his speed. Gets a good down block by Mike Shanahan, the wide receiver, and then lowers his head, squares those shoulders up, and gets that first down. Brown, 12 carries for 67 yards. And that Louisville defense, they've gone through a bunch of guys in that front seven. If, if Pitt can stay on the football field, may get a little fatigue on, this, on the defensive side for Louisville. I said Andrew Johnson, but I stopped. It was actually Terrell Floyd, the true freshman cornerback, that juked out that time by Zach Brown. Bennett, Nelson Sari. 
He's drilled by Hakeem Smith, but he still picks up three yards. And we're down to the uh, final minute now of the third quarter. 60 seconds to get rid of that win for the Pittsburgh offense. Good job by Hakeem Smith coming from that secondary position against Todd Graham and his offense. They like to spread it. They like to get you going up tempo. But right now, more importantly, they need to protect the football on this drive. Bennett inside the 40. Preston Brown, the sophomore from Cincinnati, makes the stop. Another three yard game. And if I'm Pitt, I don't run another play in this half. I let it wind down, and I'd rather take my chances in the fourth quarter. I would stall and, and not run another play until they change sides. That's exactly what Tino Sinceri was doing. He was pointing up at the clock and looking at his head coach, Todd Graham. I know they want to go up tempo, but right now is not the time. I think Graham called the play, and Tino started walking over, and he pointed right up at that clock, which is down to. Two seconds, and that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. So the Cardinals uh, get on the board. It's 14-7, uh, but Pittsburgh now has the football. They're moving it, and now they have the win. They do, and it's to their advantage, and Charlie Strong knows that that's going to affect not only his quarterback, but in special teams. Could be critical in getting that extra points on the scoreboard in the fourth quarter. Panthers trying to climb to 500 at 5-5. Five and five. Louisville trying to get their first win on senior day since 2006. Investing for yourself isn't some optional pursuit, a privilege for the ultra wealthy. It's a necessity. I find investments with E-Trade's top five lists quickly, easily. I use predefined screeners and insightful trading ideas to dig deeper, work smarter, not harder. I depend on myself, the one person I do trust to take charge of my financial future. Dear NFL football, do you know what love is? Love is turning your pickup truck into a pirate ship. Love is cold Bud Light on a crisp afternoon. It's turning a parking space into a party space. Love is loving that every Sunday is our Sunday. Bud Light, proud to be the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Because love is a beautiful thing. I am 100% certain that I am overpaying for my home phone. Trust me, it's, it's a lot of money. I feel like I'm getting duped. Surprise, you owe this much this month. I discovered Vonage. I was like, okay, thank God. Stop paying too much for your home phone service. Sign up for Vonage now and get unlimited domestic calling for $9.99 for the first three months. Our best offer ends soon. Call now. I'm Cheryl Roberts, and this is the last bill before I switch to Vonage. The young man who suffered lifelong devastating injuries because of a careless driver deserved justice. The young daughter who suffered permanent brain damage as a result of negligence deserved justice. The young newlywed who endured catastrophic burns over 60% of her body because of a drunk driver deserved justice. Selena Wim Barnes, helping victims get justice. Named to the U.S. News List as a first-tier best lawyers, best law firm for personal injury litigation. The choice is easy. Choose Selena Wim Barnes. Hi, I'm David Bromstead here with a quick technique to make your home sizzle with style. Stencils are a great way to create a pattern without committing to pricey wallpaper. The more contrast you have between the wall and the stencil color, the more drama. For a subtle effect, go for a tone on tone, barely there, but very sophisticated look. For a free two ounce color sample, log on to benjaminmore.com slash regional. SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. Start of the fourth quarter. Pitt fans have ventured over here to Louisville, Kentucky with a touchdown lead. And John, let's take a look at our Good Hands play of the day brought to you by Allstate. Different twist for the Good Hands play today. It was a defensive play by an offensive player. Mike Shanahan goes over the back, over the top of Andrew Johnson. A lot of the Cardinals fans wanted offensive pass interference, but they didn't realize that Mike Shanahan was 6'5". It looked like he just got over the top of the defensive back, the freshman Andrew Johnson. And that was a, a big turning point because on 
that series since Siri found Mike Shanahan for the 17 yard touchdown to put the Panthers up 14 to nothing. Final 15 minutes of the final home game for 2011. But a three game winning streak at stake for the Cardinals. They trail by a touchdown. Sinceri out of the gun. Fires. And this one's complete down to the 30 yard line. That's Hubie Graham, the H back. Came in with 22 catches, John, but that's his first today. Sure hands on the afternoon, on the season, I should say, for Hubie Graham. His first catch today. A nice job on third down, converting again by Tino Sinceri. Graham, a tr transfer from Illinois. Of course, Brown, a transfer from Wisconsin. This is Brown. I think he fumbled he the football. He coughed up the football. It looked like William Savoy. Listen to this crowd. Savoy comes up with it, and Greg Scruggs apparently stripped it out of his arms. It was right after the exchange, too. Yeah, it may have been a little bit of a problem on the exchange right there in the backfield. You talked about Scruggs getting a hand on it. That's just a great job of being aware. I don't think he ever had the football, Mike. That was a poor exchange from Tino Sinceri to Zach Brown. But Savoy, he was the guy with two sacks on that last defensive stand. And now he comes up with the, with the fumble. I'm told Roy Phylon, the sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky, actually stripped the ball loose right after the exchange. They're going to go upstairs and check with Steve McBride now. He's the replay official here on the Big East officiating crew. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Louisville. Huge break for the Cardinals right there. And I'm not so sure he ever had this football. I think it no. was bobbled on the exchange, and it goes right into the arms of big number 91, William Savoy. That was a problem from Sinceri to Brown on the exchange, and that bobble goes right into the arms of the big defensive tackle. 12th force turnover for the Cardinal defense this year. Dominique Brown. The big running back over the 30 yard line picks up four. There's William Savoy, one of the uh, 16 seniors, playing his final home game in front of the Cardinal crowd here. Last year they had 25 seniors. Seniors went out with a bowl victory over Southern Miss. And these guys would love to keep that uh, winning streak alive here and extend it to four. There's a pitch. <laughs> That's a great pitch. I see. Dominique Brown, the one-time quarterback, reached back and one-handed that one. If that ball goes on the, the carpet. I'm sorry, Mike. If that ball goes on the carpet, it could be scoop and score for the Panthers. That's a great athletic play by Dominique Brown. The pitch on the option, well behind him, and that right hand, that right arm, the right hand, snags it now. But the Cardinals in third and long situations, two of seven. On the conversion attempts today. Todd Thomas was in there quickly and Bridgewater just barely got rid of the football. Bridgewater stays in bounds. And I'm not sure if Charlie Strong would like that. Aaron Donald. I think Donald might have been a little bit surprised that he didn't go out of bounds. Teddy Bridgewater had plenty of time in the pocket, but let's credit this pit defense for staying in coverage. When Teddy Bridgewater extends plays with his legs, his eyes are always down the football field trying to make a big play. But if you watch the Panther, Panthers defensively today, they've done a nice job of staying in coverage. You see a white jersey running with a red jersey everywhere you look. Blazers punt, another fair catch called by Jones. I think Jones is dying to run one back, but he's uh, called fair catches all afternoon. 31 yard punt, and Pitt has the football back with that one touchdown lead. Remember when Christmas was magical? When the mailman delivered to the North Pole, and we all had a front row, shoulder top seat at the parade? Let's get back there. 
Santa's Wonderland at Bass Pro Shops has what we've all been missing. With the arcades, slot car track, crafts, even a picture with Santa, and it's all free. That's right, free. Time passes. Hold on to Christmas. Just how many appliances are on our wish lists? Because this season, the timing couldn't be better. Right now, we can get those Black Friday prices without fighting through all those Black Friday crowds, which means we can do more this year without waiting around for the season to start. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Why wait for Black Friday? This refrigerator is already just $1,298. <laughs> it was a classic Vegas night. We dropped our bags in the suite. Boom! Yeah. We caught the game at Legacy Stadium. We had dinner at Twist. Then we hit the town. Things got a little crazy. One thing led to another, and the next day, Steve tagged me in a photo from the Gold Lounge. It was a blatant violation of the code. So I did the right thing, and I reported him. Don't be that guy. Report friends and learn more at visitlasvegas.com. Big East Football on SNY is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. We will experience a 30-minute delay. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> When you just can't wait for Rocky Mountain cold refreshment, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. It's Big E's Football on SNY. Get all your post-game highlights, analysis, and the latest conference updates and news from our team of Big East experts on the Coors Light post-game show. Coming up next, only on SNY. Today's Big East Network game is brought to you by PNC for the Achiever in You. Allstate, shop less, get more, make one call to an Allstate agent. The 2012 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Go to ESPNGolf.com to sign up today. Verizon, America's largest and most reliable wireless network. And by Ameriprise Financial, more within reach. The Muhammad Ali Museum here in Louisville. Ali versus Frazier, the thriller in Manila. Frazier, the first person to knock out Ali back in 1971. Joe Frazier passing away this past week at the age of 67. His funeral is Monday in Philadelphia. Ali reportedly will be in attendance. Boy, well, 67, that's too young. Let's take a look at our game summary now, brought to you by Trade Winds Resorts. A couple of sevens here in the third quarter, and uh, we'll see what happens here in the final 15 minutes. Tino Sinceri, 12 of 15 for 168 and a touchdown, and Teddy Bridgewater, 55 yards rushing. The penalties, though, all on the Louisville side, so Charlie Strong has to stay away from yellow carpet on the green carpet in the fourth quarter. Bennett, the big freshman. You know, Tino Sinceri goes from Weddington, North Carolina, outside of Charlotte, to uh, Pittsburgh to play at Central Catholic. And he verbaled here at Louisville initially with uh, Craig Thorpe, and then he went to, uh, to Pittsburgh. Yeah, it probably means a lot to Tino playing here in Papa John Stadium because he envisioned himself once playing for the Louisville Cardinals. Right out of the middle. That's a second catch now by Hubie Graham. And that's going to be another first down. Picks up 13 on the play. 12.06 to go. Mike Leeson along with John Congemi, Amy McEnany. Big East Network game of the week. Louisville and Pittsburgh. Louisville riding a three-game winning streak, but they haven't beat Pittsburgh in three straight tries. Bennett again. Wrapped up and wrestled down. Hakeem Smith and uh, Preston Brown making the stop. So a three-game winning streak, and uh, Charlie Strong could become bowl eligible for the second straight year. And for Todd Graham in his initial season in Pittsburgh, they're four and five. They need two victories to become bowl eligible. They have West Virginia and Syracuse left after today if they can hold on to get the W here this afternoon. 
Sincerity. At the 30, that's going to be another first down. They pick up seven as Devin Street uh, pulls in his fifth catch of the day. Devin Street had that big 59 yarder earlier in this football game and another accurate throw by Tino Sinceri. He was able to put it on the numbers on a day that the wind's blowing around so severely. You need to be accurate with the football and Street has five catches for 92 yards. Recognized as the deep threats in the absence of John Baldwin. This one's going to be down in the dirt. It's going to be an incomplete. Down on the turf, I should say. Terrell Floyd to put on some pressure on Sinceri. And that was a big hit by Terrell Floyd on Tino Sinceri, forcing him to throw the football a little bit quicker than he would have liked. But you could tell today a lot of passes in the middle of the football field. Right here, seven of seven down the middle of the football field. That's where you're going to make most of your accurate throws, although he's four for six on the outside to the right. Down the middle, you can control the football in this win. Comes up firing, has his man, and he'll be twirled down shy of the 20-yard line at Street again. That's his sixth catch. Pick up nine. Floyd in coverage. Sincino, Sinceri, of course, uh, 419 yards against UConn, set a Heinz Field record. Good job of being aware, get the ball out quick, and Street trying to get to that first down marker. Now, Mike, I would be shocked if the Panthers take this football off of the line of scrimmage on third down if they roll Tino out like they tried once before. I think this is straight ahead running. The Panthers 5 of 10 on third down, 50%. Picked up one or two on the play, should move the chains. Yes, there go the chains. First down, Pittsburgh. Last catch by Street puts him over 102 here this afternoon, so he has three 100 yard games this year. And Mike, this is where Mike Shanahan is a big target down the middle of the football field, as they did in their last drive going in the other direction, the 17 yard touchdown. Bennett right up the middle, inside the 15 yard line. Well, if the Panthers score here inside 10 minutes, that'll be very damaging to this Louisville offense, Louisville football team. Now, right now, Louisville's defense desperately needs to keep the Panthers out of the end zone and hold them to a field goal opportunity. Isaac Bennett picks up six on that last play, so it's second and four. Whistles. They're resetting the play clock. As far as timeouts, Pittsburgh still with all three here in the second half. Louisville down to their final timeout. And again, we're inside nine and a half minutes. To Pittsburgh, 94%. Number one in the league in red zone efficiency. Sincere pitches. Jones, nowhere to go. Right out of real estate. Andrew Johnson's there. Preston Brown was there. Boy, a lot of young players on this Louisville football team. Huh? Very youthful on both sides, and the future is bright for the Cardinals. But right now, the, the future is now. They need this defense to step up and stop Pittsburgh on third down. Right now, you have to look for number big number 87 or the tight end Hubie Graham in this offense. I'm sorry. Got to throw this one away, so it's going to be fourth down. That's a great job by the Cardinals defensively on third down, keeping Pittsburgh out of the end zone. And this is no gimme field goal. This isn't a chippy, although it's not going to be a very long field goal. This wind is whipping from right to left. So this is going to be a tough attempt for the Panthers. Harper with a 52-yarder last week against Cincinnati, also a 50-yarder. Went wide right with 14 seconds to go. This is from 29. And remember last week, Louisville blocked one against the Mountaineers. Harper's kick. No good. He missed it. 13 of 21 now. So Harper now 13 of 21. I'm sure Kevin Harper thought this ball would catch the wind and just blow it from right to left, but it never touched it. Boy, he barely missed that one, huh? Looks like it hit the... Yeah, it hit. The, it just missed the upright hitting the back of the net. 
And you can see Harper trying to get any body language he can. He cannot believe that ball was not hit by the wind. So they have had the laces, Mike, on that kick. Mm. 44 yards and 10 plays, no points. We'd like to recognize our friends at Allstate for their charitable contributions across the country. Since 2005, Allstate has donated more than $2.5 million through the Good Hands Field Goal Program, the Benefit University General Scholarship Funds. And even though the ball did land in the nets, outside the uprights. So Harper's no good. Three points do not go up on the board. We still have a one touchdown deficit for the cards. Well, I know this, this Cardinals crowd inside Papa John Stadium and their head coach, Charlie Strong, feel a lot better about keeping the Panthers in a one-score football game, in a one-touchdown football game, with the Cards only being down seven points. Anderson in the backfield with Teddy Bridgewater, just eight and a half minutes to go. Anderson spins up to the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at our Big East leaders brought to you by PNC for the achiever in you. Max Gruder in on that last tackle. Gruder averaging over nine tackles. Second to Kasim Green of Rutgers. So J.K. Schaefer, Johnson, and Smallwood in the top five of the Big East. Clock stops at the 30-yard line as uh, Greg Williams pushes him out of bounds. Bridgewater picks up four. Good job by Teddy Bridgewater extending that play again with his legs and putting the Louisville Cardinal offense in a third and very manageable situation. Third and short now because this offense needs to stay on the football field. Teddy Bridgewater extending plays with his athleticism and the Cardinals right now struggling on third down only two of eight on the afternoon and again Cincinnati two of 13 on third down against this Pittsburgh defense a week ago Dominique Brown first down Cardinals Dominique picks up four Todd Thomas the redshirt freshman from Beaver Falls Pennsylvania finally brings him down Louisville picking up the pace offensively trying to run multiple offensive plays in this drive because that clock is at two, at 728 in county. Dominique Brown spins, gets down at the line of scrimmage, no gain. Now, Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, telling us yesterday that uh, he's been around some 30 years, and this has been the most rewarding, the most fun season for him, watching these young freshmen mature. Bridgewater wanted a little. He pumped it. I thought he wanted to go deep that time, but falls incomplete. Well, I think he knows he needed to relax on that play a little bit as we see Greg Williams, the linebacker, wanting to get off the football field. He looks like he's holding that right wrist or right arm in pain, but he's going to stay on for the Panthers. But Teddy Bridgewater needed to just calm his feet down on second down, set his feet, make an accurate throw. Bridgewater 12 of 18 for 99 yards and one interception. Steps up, finds his man, and good coverage by Pittsburgh that time. Jarrett Davis on the receiving end. Picks up three on the play. Taewon Williams, the sophomore from Patterson, New York. John Dunn very quickly. Well, Mike, just as the Louisville Cardinals defense made a great defensive stand, last set of downs in the red zone, the Panthers trying to get off the field on third down. Now with 6.23 and counting, they're going to turn it over for their offense to try to churn this clock down and get it under three minutes. Blazer just over his 25, seventh punts for the Cardinals here this afternoon. Jones back at the 30. It's a low line drive. Takes a Cardinal bounce inside the 20 yard line. It's going to be down at the 18. So that's where Pittsburgh will take over. A 45 yard punt by Josh Glazer. Todd Graham looking for his fifth victory in his first season. Tino Sinceri back at the controls when we come back. Americans are always ready to work hard for a better future. Since Ameriprise Financial was founded back in 1894, they've been committed to putting clients first, helping generations through tough times, good times, never taking a bailout. They're when you need them. 
helping millions of Americans over the centuries. The strength of a global financial leader. The heart of a one-to-one -one relationship. Together, for your future. Hey, ladies. Ah, enjoying the film? Of course not. Because this is our movie! And Dr. Pepper 10 is our soda. It's only 10 manly calories, but with all 23 flavors of Dr. Pepper. It's what guys want, like this. Catchphrase. So you can keep the romantic comedies and lady drinks. We're good. Dr. Pepper 10, it's not for women. doesn't have to slow you down. With better car replacement, available only with Liberty Mutual Auto Insurance, if your car is totaled, we give you the money for a car one model year newer. To learn more, visit us today. Responsibility. What's your policy? Miners trust the makers of Peak Antifreeze to protect their 600-ton ore haulers from extreme conditions. You can trust Peak Antifreeze's unique formula to help protect your engine from costly repairs. Peak Antifreeze. Protect your ride, no matter what you drive. Peak Antifreeze. When you peak, you win. Inside six minutes now, Pittsburgh 14-7 on top by a touchdown. And John, let's take a look at today's Bud Light playbook. Mike, we're going to take a look at that last touchdown by Tino Sinceri to Mike Shanahan, the 17-yarder. Shanahan is going to be up at the top of your screen, but watch Dexter Heyman on the inside. He's never going to get back to center field to give any type of pressure on Tino Sinceri to fit the football down the field. Tino's going to look left the entire way, but right there you can see the separation between Shanahan up at the top and a clear throwing lane between him and Heyman. Heyman needs to read those eyes of the quarterback get off the line of scrimmage in disguise and push on the football. If he pushes right with his eyes early, he closes that window down for Shanahan. He didn't do that, and that made Tino Sinceri a clear throwing lane into the goal line. And hence that long conversation we saw earlier in the game with uh, Charlie Strong sitting on the bench down there with uh, Dexter Heyman. Absolutely. I think that's what Charlie was trying to say to Dexter. Hey, if you're going to disguise, that's great. But get off the line of scrimmage and get back in a semblance where you can make a play on the football. Zach Brown, the ball carrier on the previous play. Picks up four, second and six now for the Panthers. Brown again, he's drilled. Joel Floyd, the true freshman from uh, Port Pierce, Florida, loss of one. Floyd, of course, getting the start instead of Adrian Bouchal, the junior, who did not suit up for the Cardinals today. Well, this is big for Louisville. Just as they did on their last defensive stand in the red zone, they went three and out. They found a way to get off the football field. And Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator, he says in, in pressure, situations in crunch time you go back to what you believe in and that's pressure for this defense here comes pressure since Sarah had to get rid of it and it's going to bring up a fourth down Devin Street the intended receiver but he went straight since Sarah came to the sidelines after that heavy rush not on the same page when pressure situations happen Tino thought his wide receiver is going to look for that throw behind he kept going in Devon Street, and now another pressure kick by Matt Yachlick. Oh, Yachlick had that seven-yard punt. That was against the win. Now he has the... And Louisville will be coming after this one. Barely got it off. It's a good one. Eli Rogers lost the football! Unbelievable play! And the Panthers won't be able to advance that. That's going to come back to the 33-yard line. Number six, Sir Roderick Riles. Boy, Buddy Jackson came down, and Eli Rogers hits his pads. 
That is an unbelievable sequence of events. You get the freshman trying to field the football, and Drew Carswell gets the football. And you can see the fans in the stands. They've been up and down this entire game. I know one guy that feels good about it. That's Mac Yaklik. He finally got one off up into that jet stream. And now the Panthers are going to take over. You can't advance that punt. So the Panthers will get it at the 33-yard line, Mike. You know, Pittsburgh has two number sixes. I actually think that was Drew Carswell, the tight end, that came up with that football. 14-7, Panthers. GE, we imagined a better caulk combining everything you've dreamed of. Toughness, paintability, and easy application with no sticky mess. I've been dreaming, dreaming of you. Better ideas make everyone happy. I'm your blind spot. And my job is easy. Hide big things. You're good. And if you named your own price on car insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an Allstate agent. Wow, your generator's really quiet. Yeah, it's a Honda EU 2000. Super quiet, fuel efficient and lightweight. Yeah, my generator's really loud. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah! She wants me! Maybe not! Honda EU Series Portable Generators. Lightweight, fuel efficient, and... What was that all about? Very quiet. I got this city thank you card and started earning loads of points. Okay, I'll leave that there for now. You got a weather balloon with points! Yes, I did. Points I could use for just about anything. Going in this this bridge over here. There it is. So I used mine to get a whole new perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Write your story with the City Thank You Premier Card. With no point caps and points that don't expire. Get started at thankyoucard.city.com. Today's recap brought to you by Group Talk by GE. Eli Rogers, a true freshman from Miami, being consoled by his teammates. You win as a team, you lose as a team. As he uh, muffed the punts, of course, you can't advance it, but Drew Carswell was going to take it in nonetheless. Just an unbelievable day for special teams, trying to field punts, trying to punt the football. And the Panthers feeling good about themselves. Buddy Jackson down, first guy down, and then... But I don't think Buddy Jackson, I think he just muffed he, the punt. He just muffed he, the punt. He was the first guy down to put pressure on the returner. And just like that, Brown busts through inside the 20-yard line. I mean, Buddy Jackson did a good job to make sure Eli Rogers wasn't going to get up, but he just dropped this one, hit his shoulder pads. And then Drew Carswell took off to the races. But again, you can't advance that, but it's a great field position. With only 420 to go now for Pittsburgh. And now you're asking this Cardinals defense again to keep the Panthers off the scoreboard with 414 left to go in this football game. Bennett gets the call. Big freshman gets inside the 10 yard line. All the way down near the five. So Bennett and Brown doing a great job of uh, running the football for Pittsburgh. Uh, Brown 15 carries for 86 yards, so he's flirting with his first 100-yard game. And, Mike, you can see why offensive coordinator Calvin McGee really likes the freshman. Once he gets his shoulder squared up, he can really pick him up and put him down. He looks like he's in a little bit of pain out on the football field, but he's going to stay out there right now. And now the Panthers trying to Take some time off the clock. Ten, ten seconds, nine seconds and counting before they have to snap it. Oh, 
Obviously, they keep it on the ground inside the five. Bennett to Floyd comes up to make the initial contact. And Mike, you would think the Panthers feeling confident right now up seven points with close to three minutes left to go in this football game. But remember, they want to get a touchdown. They don't want to leave it up to another field goal opportunity sure. because with the way the win has been picking up and picking down, even a chip shot is not a chip shot in this football game. So Todd Graham will keep the freshman Isaac Bennett in the backfield with Sinceri. And 100, you can, 197 yards rushing now for Pittsburgh on the afternoon. Not much there, but again, inside three minutes, just 235 to go. Phylon makes the tackle. That's a great job by Charlie Strong, defensive front. Remember, they came into this football game with injuries all across the board. Marcus Smith, Greg Scruggs, you could name them, keep naming them, Roy Phylon. They've all had injuries up front, but they found a way to hold this Panther offense to 14 points. And now with 2.15 and counting, they're trying to come up again on third and goal and keep the Panthers out of the end zone. Panthers averaging 26. But if they can get out of the stadium with 14 in the victory, they'll take it. Yeah, they may call a timeout and not even snap this one. Timeout, Pittsburgh. That is their first timeout of the half. Minute 58 to go. Todd Graham at four this and will five. Be a 30 second timeout. The victory puts them at five and five uh, with a trip to West Virginia next week and then at home against Syracuse. So two more cracks to become bowl eligible. But this one isn't over yet. Minute 58 to go, but Pittsburgh knocking on the door. This will be a full timeout. Big East football on SNY is brought to you by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. You'd be shocked how much data you use in a month. Email, status updates, finding your way, uploading photos, downloading an app, an app, and another app. Kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, all stacking up until you reach your limit. And what happens if you go over? With Sprint, you don't have to worry. Only Sprint offers truly unlimited data. It's the Jets on SNY. Get post-game reactions after every game on Jets Post Game Live. The latest Gang Green news direct from Rex Ryan on Jets Open Mic. An in-depth recap of the last game on Jets Extra Point. And a preview of the game ahead on Jets Game Plan. All on SNY, the TV home of the Jets. Back inside Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Minute 58 to go. Pittsburgh up by a touchdown. As we take a look at our Liberty Mutual play of the game, and it's the, the muff punt by Eli Rogers as it just bounced off his shoulder pads. Yeah, it was, it was a turning point. You can see the crowd. They've been up and down this entire day. And you can see Charlie Strong, the head coach of Louisville, trying to console his young freshman wideout who was in on special teams. It was a very difficult day to field the football, whether you're a receiver, a defensive back, a linebacker, anywhere on this football field because the gust was are probably closer to 20, 25 miles an hour today, and it's been a constant from right to left. And Johnny, yet another third down situation, third down and four for Pittsburgh. Well, the Panthers would, would like to put it in the hands of Tino Sinceri. Now they have the senior Zach Brown replacing Bennett in the backfield. Sinceri. Sinceri, touchdown, Pittsburgh. Tino Sinceri gets his fourth rushing touchdown. Calvin Pryor, the freshman, had him, but couldn't hold him back. He goes four yards, and that's going to be the ball game. Well, credit Calvin McGee and head coach Todd Graham. They take that timeout, and they just displace everybody else except for the quarterback in shotgun. And Tino Sinceri is able to stretch that football just past the goal line for six points and a much needed six points for the Panthers. Harper, extra point is good. And the Panthers averaging a 26, they have 21, but a two touchdown lead now after going 33 yards in five plays and just 305. Great job of capitalizing on special teams in the fumble. Tino Sinceri goes in, there's no one else in the backfield. He gives the illusion of pass and then he's able to, to slip past the arm tackle about the three-yard line of Calvin Pryor, the freshman. 
and he stretches that ball just beyond the goal line for the touchdown. He breaks the plane just at the one yard line. His knee never touches the ground because he rides Calvin Pryor into the end zone. So Sinceri has a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown here this afternoon. 14 attempts, 31 yards, and a touchdown on the ground for Sinceri. We talked about the roller coaster season this Pitt Panther team has had. No one has had an endure that roller coaster more than this quarterback. He's had his ups. He's thrown for 419, a career high in a game. And today he's just been efficient in this new offense that Todd Graham is installing for the Pitt Panthers. Moments ago, we saw Charlie Strong with Eli Rogers on the sidelines. These Louisville players, they love playing for Charlie Strong. Absolutely. I mean, that was heart wrenching for everybody on this Louisville team, but they'll stick together. Harper ready to kick. Sonoris Perry and Dominique Brown, the deep players. It's going to be Perry just outside the 10 yard line. Gets over the 25, dropped at the 27, a 17 yard return. Now for our AT&T All-America player update of the week. And how about Houston quarterback Case Keenum? 35th 300 yard game this past week. 22 of 29, 325, three touchdowns, of course, last week. Already passed uh, Timmy Chang of Hawaii. Over 17,537 passing yards. And Houston Cougars, of course, a potential future team of the Big East. The text vote to 55862 from your mobile phone to vote and for a chance at a trip to the national championship. Over the middle, this one's complete. But again, time is not on their side. Michael Lee Harris on the receiving end picks up 15. Well, you've got plenty of time right now to get down and score, but you have to you have to be careful. You only have one timeout remaining, and they're wasting a lot of time at the line of scrimmage trying to get set for this next play. Bridgewater, Michael Lee Harris went up for it, couldn't come down with it inside the 45-yard line. The key right now, Mike, for Louisville is to get gains of more than 10 yards so that that clock will stop when they reset the chains on the sidelines and they'll be able to get back to the line of scrimmage without using that timeout. Bridgewater. Trying to avoid the rush, can't do it this time as big Aaron Donald just wrestles him down. Third sack for the Pitt Panthers here today. And you might think that might be the time that Donald finally makes his number appear again. He had some pressure in that first half. And I'm thinking Louisville may need to use this timeout very soon if they don't convert here on third down. Bridgewater. And incomplete, the intended receiver, Jarrett Davis, stops the clock with 48 seconds to go. So the Cardinals looking for that first four game winning streak since uh, closing the 05 season. Looks like that's not going to happen. And Todd Graham, who's at four and five, said they could easily be seven and two. It's, it wasn't like he was uh, if such and if butts and candy and nuts would have could have, but he really feels comfortable about this team really turning the corner. Bridgewater fires and Andrew Smith the intended receiver. That's a great catch. Nice They're going to give him the catch. The junior out of Miami Teddy Bridgewater against the extending plays and a nice athletic catch on the outside by Andrew Smith. Smith only his ninth catch this year averaging just under 17 goes for 25. And they're going to go upstairs and take a look at see if it hit the ground. I believe the pit coaches came off the bench and called a timeout. That'll give them one remaining. Pittsburgh is challenging the ruling on the prior play that the quarterback was not beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. So I stand corrected. I thought it might have uh, hit the ground on Andrew Smith's diving catch, but we'll go back and check that line of scrimmage. And of course, well, the ball mics on the 41 yard line, it looked like when that ball was snapped and now Teddy Bridgewater sprinting to his left. That's going to be tough to call because 
I, his entire body has to be across that 41 yard line. I think it, actually the, the 41 or the 39 yard line. Was it the 39 yard line? Well, the line of 39 scrimmage is at the yard 39. line. So his entire body has to be in front of the 39 yard line. I think he was towing the line of the 39 yard line. Take a look again. The 39 yard line is that where the ball was snapped. He steps up and steps through and now goes to his left. Let's take a look. If he steps right on the 39 <laughs> yard line right there. That's a tough that's a tough call. That's very very close. Any part of your body can be on that yard line. He's okay. Either way, it's close. Steve McBride's looking at it upstairs. That's Dennis Hennigan, our referee. And if they should lose the challenge, they lose the timeout, of course, but they still have one After remaining. further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The quarterback was not beyond the line of scrimmage. Pittsburgh will be charged their second timeout of the half. So they still have one left with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, it looked like Teddy Bridgewater, that right foot, pushed off on the 39-yard line, and I'm not so sure. That would have been a tough call to to turn around the way it's been going for Louisville. They haven't received a, the benefit of a call this afternoon. But once again, Teddy Bridgewater, that presence out there, knowing where that line of scrimmage was, it's amazing how close he made it that time. He does it week in and week out. <laughs> he certainly does. Bridgewater. Clock running inside 25. He dumps it inside the 30-yard line. And quickly, Dominique Brown gets out of bounds with 19 seconds to go. Picks up 11. Remember last week, they won 38-35, came down to the onside kick at West Virginia. The other way around, of course, West Virginia with the onside kick, and right. Dominique Brown recovered. You think you want to get one into the end zone right now, if you can. Throw one down into the end zone let one of your big playmakers fight for that football Bridgewater going down the middle touchdown Scott Radcliffe only his fifth catch this year this one goes 25 for the score he used to be a, one of their big time receivers on this team Scott Radcliffe came into the game a couple of occasions this is the first time Teddy Bridgewater was able to find him down the middle of the football field he does a nice job of using his speed to get behind the linebackers and a good touch pass down the middle by Bridgewater. Seven plays, 71 yards, 141 off the clock for the Cardinals. 21-13, Philpott on for the extra point. Drills it down through the middle of the freeway. 21-14, 12 seconds to go. a nice job of pass protection by this Louisville offensive line and a better throw down the middle of the football field again down the middle is where you can control the football with this wind coming from the right to left and Bridgewater throws a dime right over the secondary and Tron Reed in this pit defensive staff not happy with the outcome of that drive and when Pittsburgh scored it go up 21 to 7 I said that should be the game I guess I spoke too early 12 seconds not much time, but again, it comes down to the onside kick. Last week, West Virginia scored. The onside kick recovered by Dominique Brown, but now the pendulum has swung to the other side, and Louisville will have to recover this onside kick. So keep your eyes on the good hands team for the Pitt Panthers. They've got one guy out there that has great hands, and that's Devin Street. He's wearing number 15. A lot of big defense alignment out there too, John. So the Blazer will kick it the other way. Got to go ten. Make a it. scramble. Cardinal football. Phil Pop. who usually kicks Blazer with the onside kick. Philpott comes up with the football. The pit defender, the, they didn't have to touch the football because it didn't go 10 yards. Watch this again. This ball has to travel 10 yards. It just there, yeah, Ooh. it did. It just barely got over 10 yards, and it looked like the Cardinals on the bottom of that pile. I'm not so sure who ended up getting it. It looked Blazer. like Blazer. 
Blazer kicked it. Blazer kicked it. Blazer comes up with it. Williams was on the bottom of that pile, it looked like, for the Panthers. He couldn't come up with it. Now Teddy Bridgewater with nine seconds left to go. Chichester's the biggest guy on the field at 6'8". Bridgewater. This is going to be at two seconds. Dumps it off to Dominique Brown. Back to Bridgewater. Out of bounds, and this football game is over. This young Louisville team added some excitement down the stretch, but Todd Graham gets his fifth victory as Pittsburgh goes to five and five. Well, it went right down to the wire, Mike, and both coaches congratulated. Certainly did go right down to the wire before Teddy here. Bridgewater turned into the three stooges on that last play. Uh, Jonas Schwartz alongside Don McPherson, Sean Mulcahy, 21-14. Pittsburgh getting the win over Louisville. This is a surprise, but really there were some key turning points in the second half. There were, and they're going to go back and rehearse that uh, that last play again because they didn't get it right. They didn't handle that last that last play. But give Louisville a lot of credit. They came back in this game, made it a tough football game. And Pittsburgh, true to form, strong in the second half, and it was shaking the second. I'm not giving Louisville any credit. I mean, right <laughs> now they gave up 200 yards rushing. That is not Charlie Strong football, and that is not what the Louisville defense is all about. So that was how they lost the game. And they got fooled on a quarterback draw that we were all yelling even yeah, me I've never studied right. it one bit of film and I was yelling at the draws coming <laughs> so we will get into all that right uh, in just a second Coors Light post game show coming up after the break we'll see you in two Right back. We call Tuesday. Caesars Atlantic City, routinely spectacular. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity, the greatest honor the band can grant a non band member. Among the privileged few who have been chosen have been professional athletes, a United States Senator, even Bob Hope. Fortunately, knowing how to play the sousaphone is not a requirement for dotting the I in Script, Ohio. Fans show their loyalty in all kinds of ways. Ours, just by another Hyundai. Investing for yourself isn't some optional pursuit, a privilege for the ultra-wealthy. It's a necessity. I find investments with E-Trade's top five lists quickly, easily. I use predefined screeners and insightful trading ideas to dig deeper. Work smarter, not harder. I depend on myself, the one person I do trust to take charge of my financial future. Optimum Homes is faster and easier to navigate than ever before. Online or on TV, so you can find just what you're looking for. Go to IOTV606 or OptimumHomes.com. For a free two-ounce color sample, log on to BenjaminMoore.com slash regional. Hi, I'm Tony Ticanti, general manager at Lexus of Massapequa, Long Island's number one volume Lexus dealer. Why do you think people choose to make their luxury car purchase from us? Could it be because Edmund said Lexus has the best retained value of any luxury brand? Or because IntelliChoice said that Lexus has the best brand value of all brands? Or could it be because of our selection, our customer service, maybe our value? I invite you to come and find out for yourself here at Lexus of Massapequa. Success for me, Tony Ticanti, Lexus of Massapequa, where excellence is predictable. Hey everybody, welcome to the Coors Light Post Game Show. Sean Mulcahy, Don McPherson, Jonas Schwartz, alongside uh, well, actually, at the back end of what was a very interesting game, 21-14 Pitt getting the win over Louisville. Louisville, a team that had come in very hot. What was the most surprising thing to you about this game? 
I thought, actually, it's, it's not really not that surprising, but I think it was the key was that uh, Teddy Bridgewater just looked confused, never got his feet set, never felt like, looked like he was comfortable in his football game. It's not a big surprise only because he is a freshman, but it is a surprise because he was playing well coming into this game. Surprise for me for Pittsburgh right now was the fact that Isaac Brown and Bennett, the two running backs, had over two or just that 200 yards rushing. It was amazing. I mean, they were a nice one-two punch. And on the other side, Louisville, where was the defense? Dexter Heyman, Smith, Marcus Smith, these are their two top players. They didn't really show up today, so I didn't really see much out of them. You know, what we did see, Teddy uh, Bridgewater did struggle for most of the game, but he kept fighting. And he brought them back. Looked like the game was over, and he did bring them back late with a late touchdown, which kept things very interesting. Well, I think that's the one thing we said about Teddy Bridgewater is that he is a poised young man. Even though he was confused at times, nice strike there for the touchdown. He's got a strong arm. He's a good quarterback, a good solid player. And you know, if, another thing that you got to look at is the offensive line. You weren't really sure if they were too tentative or not really aggressive enough because there was pressure. Bridgewater did do a good job of getting around the pocket, but they didn't win. Well, it was amazing. The onside kick worked, and then we saw this play at the end, which I guarantee you, Charlie Strong, oh. not exactly how they drew that one up. And, and that's the thing when you talk about a young quarterback. That's a young quarterback mistake. What he should be doing there is making sure he gets the ball in the end zone. This is not the time to do all the laterals and hook and laterals at that point. To throw the ball in the end zone. Remember Michigan State a couple weeks ago. You never know what can happen in the last seconds of a game. And I'm assuming from the defensive standpoint, when you're watching a quarterback drop back for a Hail Mary, Pressure always helps, obviously. Yeah, you got to get after the quarterback. You pin the ears back, you put on your best move, swing move, hand move, whatever you need, and you go get the quarterback. All right, you know, Louisville was really fighting from behind, I mean, the whole game. And they managed to give, you know, have some moments here where they looked like things were going well. This hit here, we thought might change the game a little bit. Boy, that's a great open field tackle. And then they get, you know, you think you get the ball back, you think you're going to get the break after that, and then boom, you lose it on the, on the punt. That was a backbreaker right there. Eli Rogers looked like he just took his, his eye off the ball. Yeah, you know, the sun is kind of in his face, so that might have had something to do with it. But what a crit critical point in the juncture of the game for that to happen. And how about Sincero here? We all thought the draw was coming. How come Louisville didn't think I, I don't. I don't know. They, they empty out the backfield. You're exactly right. They empty out the backfield. You know it's going to be a quarterback draw. You don't want to throw the ball because of the clock in that, in that situation. You don't want to stop the clock. So you know they're going to run it. They empty the backfield. You know it's going to be a QB draw. You know, some defenses have an automatic stunt to stop that when there's no one in the backfield they call empty they have an automatic stunt to help that all right Tino Sinceri otherwise had a really well just including that draw had a very good game very in control all day long what did he have going so well I thought he did a couple things one right there I thought he threw very well off the play action pass and the other thing when he set his feet we talked about this earlier when he sets his feet and he throws the ball on time he's as accurate as anyone in the league I thought he did an outstanding job additionally running the football today some design runs but also pulling it down and running when, it, when he needs to go it is a good point because those design runs Sean does that put a defense back on its heels when they're playing against a quarterback like Sinceri who's not necessarily I mean he obviously has mobility but he's not Bridgewater or B.J. Daniels, so you don't come in thinking this guy's going to hurt us with the run. Yeah, you know, he's similar to an Aaron Rodgers. The guy has deceiving speed and moves. He'll come up with about 30, 40 yards a game rushing, and he had 30 yards today rushing. He threw the ball for 70%, no turnovers. He played a great game as a quarterback, and that's what you want. But to your point, as a defense, it's very tough to have a mobile quarterback because you're not really sure what's, who's going to get the ball, if he's going to throw it or he's going to run it. All right, well, we'll see how these two teams move forward. Obviously, Pitt will try to gain momentum off this. Louisville, they'll have to try to bounce back again, and it looked like they had been doing so well. Here's a look at the rest of their schedule coming up, and you can see UConn, South Florida. The problem for Louisville here is that they were really looking like they could be a team that uh, could hang around Cincinnati at the top, and they look to be on an upward trend. Now that certainly gets uh, knocked back a peg. It, it really does. And if they look ahead to Connecticut and South Florida, Connecticut is, is, is starting to play a little bit better now. They're starting to get their feet underneath them. And obviously South Florida with the win last night is getting some momentum, but they're only one win in the conference. So, so Louisville's still in a pretty good situation. And Pitt, of course, big rivalry game with West Virginia and then Syracuse. And I would imagine Todd Graham takes this win and says, we're going to run with this. We're finally getting things right. At least that's how he has to pitch it to his team. Yeah, absolutely. Pittsburgh should try and run the table. West Virginia has had you know some some trials and tribulations the past couple weeks and you know they may not even pull it out of victory today and Syracuse has been downhill so Pitt's schedule is somewhat favorable throughout the season all right we are just getting started here on the Coors Light post game show coming up it was certainly an interesting afternoon for Penn State as they got back to actually playing football against Nebraska an emotional pregame we will tell you all about it when the Coors Light post game show rolls on Big E.